Hello and welcome to EFAC Super Chat Catch Up for the Fallout episode. You know the one? It was all about that, uh, about the fallout of the Fallout discussions. Uh, yeah. I How's see. That, how that goes. The brilliant video from Jim Sterling, who uh, people have asked, like, uh, surely that counts for the yearly one. And I was like, I don't think that's how the rules work. I'm sorry. <laughs> no. Know. No. But, you know, it's, it's, it's a fair question. Uh, we got some messages while we were doing that stream, so I thought I'd uh, thought I'd read some out, give them a little answer, Rooney, and uh, yeah, do that for a little bit of time. See how it goes. The first one says, "In honor of Bernard Hill, what are your favorite theater moments?" Um, probably when he's at uh, his son's gravesite. There's just a really great acting. We learn a lot about him there. Yeah. Um, I mean. I guess I'll do the boring answer is speech. <laughs> it's my favorite scene. I feel like one of the... They're all good, but one of the best moments, or at least one of the ones I really like, is that we get all the setup for his reasons for why he doesn't want to help Gondor. And then when the actual question comes, he's pretty much instantly like, yeah, we'll do it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's right. It um, shows a lot of character. I quite enjoy characters who are very aware of all the reasons why, even if they're selfish, uh, why they wouldn't do a thing, and then they do the thing, because they're like, it's the right thing to do. Yep, coming uh, through yeah. in a moment of crisis. He's, um, I think a lot of people could watch Lord of the Rings without realizing he's like one of the best characters. Uh, um, yeah, I think so. Probably because um, Fellowship directs your attention very heavily to the Fellowship. Mm -hmm. he's, uh, he's He is high up there. Oh yeah, one of my favorites. Can't wait for the long man's nurse what review. I ain't touching Doctor Who. I, I told Gary I, I agree to watch the specials that happened a while back, if uh, if that means I don't have to watch the new seasons, and he said yes. So I'm free. I don't have to watch Wheeling them. Dealing. They look and have been awful, and uh, I don't know what... like. The fact that their ratings are doing worse, at least from what I was told, than... Uh, even uh, Jodie Whittaker's era. She's like, good God. Doctor I'm just glad they learned their lessons, you know? Oh, yeah, really that's that the case, then. Man, are they actually doomed? Well, you and know, the, the budgets are higher now because of Disney money, mm. and uh, I just think, I don't think Disney realized what they've bought. <laughs> like, it's, uh, it was, it was... Uh, well, the... yeah, that's, uh, I guess that's kind of interesting that they've, like, bought into something that they don't really understand that well. No, it was Doctor Who was a big IP at its biggest. What it is right mm -hmm. now is similar to what is, uh, similar to Star Wars, Star Trek. You know these these fledgling yeah. fucking franchises. What a shame! Driving uh, them all into the ground. It's amazing. Every yeah. single one, every one they're driving into the ground. Ooh, a full roster of fighters in today's EFAT must be an Avengers level threat. I wonder what pain Muller will subject us to. Oh, you know. The usual, as I do. Thanks for that. No problem. Someone sent a sticker of a Shiba dog dressed in a traditional outfit waving Japanese fans. A traditional outfit, which... That's, that's how it's described. Or... Uh, I don't actually know. It's just, it just says traditional outfit. So, uh... Well, I mean, Shiba Inu's Japanese dog, right? So traditional Japanese attire. Sweet. Well, yeah, but, like, I'm an American, right? Yeah, but Shiba Inu's Japanese dog, so maybe if it's, like, an emoji or something, then it would be, it would be that. Yeah. Fritosis is here, nice. Yes, he was. I wonder if Fringy can lay eggs since he's part bird. No, I can't. Hmm. can't well, no, he's, he's a, he's a male, right? I mean, I am, but I can't. I if I was, I couldn't do it anyway because I'm not a bird. Farewell and adieu to you, fair Flemish massives. Farewell and adieu, you massives of Fleem. That's from uh, good old gay actor Michael Douglas. Uh, would the All Bill right. and Ted movies make for good EFAP movies material? They can be fun strooms, also high rugs, Molly and Frong. Yeah, yeah maybe. Hey. Um, Wayne's World could as well. A lot of films like that uh, it wouldn't be ruled out but I don't know it would be high on the list of 
things we'd probably want to do compared to other options we got right now. But yeah, yeah. fair shout. My life is at Jab Jabadi because I know your secret synthetic man. You are rags, yes. You use rags as a way to cover up your real identity. That's why we don't want to... You don't see you two at the same time in the same place. Hmm. I'm definitely not synthetic, man. I <laughs> No, 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 no. I'm definitely not. That's, uh... We're nothing alike. What a conspiracy they've weaved. I'm not... I don't live sad and alone with my parents. Aww. Yearning for the affection of another human being. <laughs> He's like Gollum, but with women instead of... <laughs> just, I hate them. Uh, look at beekeeper donkeys. What? Oh, they're like donkeys that are dressed up in the beekeeper suits. Is that a thing that beekeepers need? Do, do some of them have donkeys? Well, donkeys? Are donkeys immune to bee stings? I don't know about that. But then again, that's just an assumption I've just made up in my own head, so that could be totally inaccurate. Bonico is thought to be the world's only beekeeping donkey. Gene Brandy, the vice president of American Beekeeping Foundation, said this is the first time he's heard about a donkey, or any other animals for that matter, being used to gather honey. Okay. How? With his hooves. How does he how is he so dexterous? <laughs> yeah, that's all I'm wondering. How does this happen? You stand up on his hind legs and then and then like, you know, pull it, open up the uh the bee enclosure and then pull out the thing that all the bees are on. I guess I maybe he called. does. I mean here he is. I'm not an expert in bees. It's been a long time since I've seen Bee movie. Oh. I mean he's wearing the outfit. Yeah, that's awesome. <laughs> 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 he's ready to go I'm so glad he's wearing the outfit I'm so glad well protected, that's what's important no one likes a stung donkey no and the bees just don't understand, everyone's just trying to help okay, even the donkey uh there was an article saying Knuckles is the show Jews need right now I saw people sharing a scene where it's something to do with Knuckles and is Knuckles Jewish? Is that, is that a thing? I'm not I up no on idea. my Sonic lore, so... I got nothing on that one. I, I have no idea. Uh, could you say this with a Sean Connery impression? Not just men, but extraordinary men. And there's a league of them. That would have been... That would have made the movie so much better. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Yes, it would have. I still like that movie. <laughs> I, mean, I like it. <laughs> it's such a dumb movie, but in the best of ways. It's such a cool thing to get made, even though it's like, you know, ridiculous, I guess. Destroyed and, a man's and entire will, career. Yeah. There will be no more. It does make you wonder, right? Like, had we not gotten that, how many Sean Connery uh, appearances would we gotten otherwise? Performances. Mm -hmm. Oh, well. Look up the Tonberry King from Final Fantasy 16. Did someone tell us to do this before? They told us to uh, look up Tonberries, but the Tonberry King, um, he's his own enemy. Mm. He's like special. I think I remember seeing him uh, when I was scrolling through images of Tonberries. Oh, wow. Uh, he's looking a bit different. Are the Tonberries the ones with, that we liked with, like, that they insta kill or whatever? Yeah, with the little knife. Yeah. Yeah, see, he's a right. bit. He's got a big. Ah, uh, you know the simplicity of the. I I don't know the simplicity of the uh the the original one from whichever game was that Final Fantasy VI or something. Can't remember. But yeah, I guess he is the king. But I don't know. I think it's not as funny when it's a big knife. Yeah. I think it's funny when it's just like a kitchen well, knife. Well, it's, it's the way smaller <laughs> knife and the way he's a smaller killer. creature that looks almost cute. Yeah. This is them trying to be like, okay, we got to do this seriously. Yeah, this feels like they dark souls the him, you know. Well, it reminds me of like they had to do Galactus, right, in the second. Uh, mm -hmm. Oh yeah, right. Fantastic Four movie. movie. Yeah. And it's like, well, we can't have a big purple guy. We're gonna have to have a cloud. We make a big cloud. <laughs> that's <laughs> that's interesting. <laughs> yeah, big cloud sure is an interesting design. Like, are you guys sure cloud? about this? <laughs> like, yeah, it'll work great. <laughs> Hi, I'm gay actor Michael Douglas, and I'm going on tour to eat at every Wall Wahlburgers until my heart explodes. It's called Heart of Markness. 
wow. like the name Mark Wahlberg. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Nicely done. <laughs> um, LGR is one of the coziest YouTube channels. Off the charts, wholesome levels with someone like me, gay actor Michael Douglas, can appreciate. Oh, that's nice. Uh, have either of you guys ever watched that channel before? Is that the one they've recommended a few times? The animal one? Well, it's Lazy LGR. That's uh, Lazy Game Reviews. He like does reviews of PC games and PC hardware. Then no, I have not. Unless I'm thinking of a to unless there's a different one with the same acronym. But yeah, LGR made good 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 videos about computers and old video games and stuff. Yeah. Uh, gay actor Michael Douglas has posted. Oh, here she comes. Watch out, boys. She'll chew the couch. Oh, here she comes. She's got Down syndrome. I don't know that one. Or at least those lyrics. Uh, I, I don't think that's the official one, but I guess if Michael I like Douglas. A weird out the of the song. <laughs> that, could, that could be. I haven't. Fuck, I haven't listened to his songs in forever. Does he still make new I ones? Likewise. I think he does. Hope so. Uh, domesticated foxes are very squeaky. Yeah, they're for, squeaky I've, critters. Yeah, yeah. Mm. squeaky fellas. I guess uh, one wouldn't expect that, or would they? Um, I don't know. I don't know what to uh, expect out of a fox. Yeah, I'm not sure what I would expect. Like, if someone told, if someone asked me before I knew, what do you, what, what kind of sound do you think a fox makes? Do you I think they're squeaky? Yeah, yeah, I, don't, I, don't I, don't I guess they could be. That. Maybe. Wasn't there a I viral song that answers that question? That's, yeah, that's, 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 I was thinking that, but when I said that, I'm like, is that, that sounds like something that I'm aware of. What does a fox <laughs> Unfortunately. say? Unfortunately. <laughs> yeah. Um, but no, I wouldn't have imagined a fox being squeaky, I suppose. It's a clever little detail when at the very end of the taking of Deborah Logan, you see Kara using a party blower, which resembles a snake tongue. Does that mean anything to you guys? I don't know. I guess nope. that's from a movie. Someone got taken. Maybe that's one of the hmm. Taken movies. The taking of Deborah Wazinski or whatever it was. Starring Liam Neeson, hopefully. Starring Liam Neeson. We all know you but can't have a Taken movie time When he jumps over the fence, it takes 30 cuts for him to get over yes. it. Yes. Remember I the Helldivers gonna... meme? The Helldivers Yeah, one. I remember, yeah, Helldivers. Great promotion right there. <laughs> I, uh, I think in this one, they should, in the next Taken movie, Liam Neeson doesn't play Liam Neeson. He plays the daughter getting kidnapped, and someone else plays Liam Neeson. I mean, it could work. I don't rule it out. Uh, I wanted to recommend Slow Horses with Gary Oldman leading the office of the least capable MI5 agents ever. Le Car meets Lan Lanusi. Uh, terrific writing. I have never heard of that. Yeah, no clue. Sounds interesting, though, I suppose. Hail the Victorious Dead. Another strong scene, because all the theater scenes are really good. But then again, most of the, all the scenes in Lord of the Rings are pretty good, in so... Lord of the Rings, yeah. You're playing your favorite post-nuclear RPG, and all of a sudden, you're a raider. You didn't ask for this. You didn't choose this. Yet, there it is. You guys remember that? That was, uh, was that? That was, um... That was extra credits. credits yeah. Right? Fucking legendary yeah. channel. Making just totally not cringe videos Reminding all the time. people that they exist every year with <laughs> some terrible video. It is that funny how that goes. off. <laughs> Yeah, there was a time where they made videos that people liked. Believe like, it or oh, not. Oh, this is interesting and insightful. And you'd check in every once in a while. Oh, what are, what's like your credits up to? Then they turned into some super hyper, mega cringe lefty weird channel that everyone made fun of. Listen, I'm just saying, if you have a World War II game, you need to let people know if they select or are forced into playing the Nazis, what the Nazis were and how bad they were. Like a little essay, just a little essay on screen. Goes over in multiplayer, it. yeah. You can't have them be Let's morally know. equivalent in multiplayer. You gotta let them know. And, and you know, maybe a little video, actually, before you can play. It's a mandatory half-hour video. That would fix it. They're helping gamers. 
Uh, Full Night New Vegas, fiends are slightly better organized druggy raiders. They're not cannibals. There was a cook, cook who burned people alive with a flamethrower, but was separately a really good chef. Well. Maybe th that's the name, maybe. Uh, who doggy, ho oh, what is thyest thinketh of the new kingdom cometh deliverance video game? Also, Froggy Tell, Mola to play, GTA 3, hit and run with a gun. Well, I don't know anything about the, uh, I don't know anything about that game, actually. I haven't played it. Well, I played it for like five minutes once, um, and I got distracted with something else. But I, I just don't know anything about it. Um, well, I wouldn't need to... Mola's played Grand Theft Auto 3. At some point. I don't think it left much yeah. of an impression on me, though. That's... That's fascinating. And then that's, that's the fascinating thing. When did you play it? Do you, do you know? Well, I have no idea when. It was a while ago. All right. But, well, I got, did you play Simpsons Hit and Run before you played it? I assume I did, but obviously Simpsons Hit and Run is the benefit of being Simpsons. That's true. Simpsons quote, Don't thank me, thank the knife. <laughs> <laughs> with the, uh, oh. exploding... That was the Scouts one. Yeah, with the, the exploding, um, was it the kidney or his pancreas? And then they appendix, throw it and it has it? like an actual... Uh, uh, yeah, that's right. His appendix is about to burst. Cuts it out. But thankfully, I've got my trusty pocket knife. And then, yeah, it explodes. And then you've got fucking Mo throwing Mole Man out of the tavern. <laughs> you call that a knife? This is a knife. Oh, down I go. <laughs> Poor guy is too big for him. <laughs> you remember the joke at the end when while Homer, Bart, and like uh, Ned were out in the sea and he had stolen <laughs> the scout yeah. guy's knife and then they're getting attacked by a the bear. bear yeah. oh, hold on, I'll, 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 I'll stop him with my, uh, my, oh, <laughs> he's just looking around for it. And then what was it? The bear hunted them down later on in the, like, the end credit thing? Yeah. And then stuck around and ambushed him. <laughs> uh, Peter Jackson's Pirates of the Caribbean or Gore Verbinski's Lord of the Rings? <clears throat> Who did Gore Verbinski do? What did, or what? what did he do? <laughs> Who did oh. he do? Well, I would have thought you could guess okay. from the question. Yeah. Well, maybe. I didn't want to, like, assume. I figured if I didn't know, I could just ask, right? You could tell me the answer. Well, just I already did, sure. right? Kind of. Yeah, you implied it again. Um, I guess he did the Pirates of the Caribbean movies. Correct. Indeed. All right. Um, I kind of want to see his version of I don't Lord need of the Rings. To, I guess I don't need to tempt fate or anything. Or, or wait, was it like which one of the two would you would you be interested in seeing, was it? Or like, would you tempt fate? Well, for me, I just, I'll just version, take it to but... mean... You know, if we if we're picking them at their times of making possibly their greatest films respectively, then I'll just say that I prefer Peter Jackson's Pirates, uh, the Gore Verbinski's Lord of the Rings. As much as I yeah. love seeing Lord of the Rings being told as a story, I uh, I'm not a hugely fond of the trilogy of Pirates of the Caribbean overall. I really like it, but the first one's the only one that I feel like is is top notch. I suppose what's interesting about that is when I'm thinking about him, I'm thinking of, of Rango more so than, than Pirates of the Caribbean. I'm yeah, like, that's oh, what I said man, maybe. I wonder, what, I wonder what Peter Jackson's like Rango would look like. I thought the question was like, would you rather see Gore Verbinski do Lord of the Rings or Peter Jackson do Pirates of the Caribbean? No, I, yeah, I think that is the question. Yeah. Okay. Um. Okay, well, yeah, I think I'd agree that I'd probably prefer to see... Peter Jackson's uh, Pirates of the Caribbean. It's pretty easy for me because I just think that of the two trilogies, one is significantly better than the other. Yeah. So. Yeah. Um, and hey, that means we could get like a super amazing Pirates trilogy. It's cool mm. with me. Hopefully that means we don't lose any of the good stuff and we get a whole bunch of new good stuff. And we get to keep Orlando Bloom because Peter Jackson likes him. <laughs> Our favorite. Uh... I'm all on EFAB 253. Uh, the video was made by an AI. You can tell from slightly contradicting arguments, repetition, inaccuracies, and narrator equals robot. Uh, 253. Two, Let me have a look. I don't remember this. 
two, five, because that was uh, some time ago. Mm. Um, the problem with over criticism. That was the Ratatouille episode. Well, that was not. That was wasn't. Not someone I think is is an AI. Yeah. Next in the world, and I'm not talking about just. No, I'm pretty sure that's a person. Yeah, like I. I yeah, <laughs> that's not that's not sticking out to me. It's like, oh yeah, that was like notably like weird that that like what that video was. He also kind of like you know, I think we agreed with some of what he said and then disagreed with a bunch of it. Yeah, and, like, that, was, it was... that was definitely one of those like you know more of a mixed bag kind of videos. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Of all the people we've covered, he's not one I would pick to be AI. <laughs> no. Uh, hello there. Hello. Hi. Uh, Muller, if the Americans dropped a successful fat man at Nagasaki, how come the enemy's bombs they dropped were low megaton bombs in 2077? <laughs> um, it, it's Fallout stuff, right? Yeah, well... I don't know, just because you can make a bomb like bigger doesn't mean right? you necessarily want to. How come the enemy's bombs they dropped were low megaton bombs in 2077? What do I mean by I the enemy's the... bombs they dropped? I guess the bombs that the enemies used? The enemy's bombs that they dropped. Um, well, I just mean, because uh... you can make a bomb bigger doesn't mean you necessarily want to. Yeah, there's, there's countless ways you, you could got... explain that, I guess. Yeah, like maybe just the, in, to deliver it, you could send it farther if it's smaller or you don't want to necessarily actually have it just destroy more than you kind of want it to i don't know i don't know uh i asked kratosis how extensive the process was for agents of vault tech to access america's nuclear arsenal in fallout 76 the worst game did it better um well we can't really ask him right now but fair enough I found the Brotherhood of Steel lack of energy weapons disturbing. There were no energy weapons in that whole show. None, yeah. I Which think we like, may have oh, seen... This is an... We never saw them fire any, but I think we saw yeah, some designs. Yeah, we saw designs. a couple. We saw a pistol. I think we saw a pistol and a rifle. Yeah. And they were both laser weapons. They weren't uh, plasma weapons. Which, it, it's kind of like the Halo thing. How come it? everyone just uses blue, um, the little blue lasers instead of, like, they use, like... Brain. They don't even, they didn't even really look like plasma rifle shots. They just looked like generic blue stuff flying through the air. Because plasma yeah. rifle, it shoots kind of smallish, like machine gun style, um, like rounds. But there weren't any green ones, and there weren't any needles, and there weren't any, you know, like green carbine shots. And similarly, yeah. in Fallout, it was all just like generic pistol, and that was it, essentially. When you, ha you could have like green stuff flying through the air for plasma, you could have the red lasers... But why take advantage of your setting? Yeah, but it's such a good adaptation. That one's really baffling as well, though. It's like, why not? Surely it's not like that difficult. Some people feel they did that to the maximum. All these people crazy. Skyrim was my girlfriend, Mola Rage. Yes, she was. Yes, she was. Uh, I still can't get past that Hank should probably have known who Moldava is, considering she was a prolific pre war. Her name. Could have been a red flag. Um, I mean, he should have known her name. There's so many ways he could have found out her name, both pre and post war. It's just sad. Um, and her giving her name away, there's no when benefit. He may well have known it. Yeah, there's just, she gains nothing by doing that. Because one could argue, like, oh well, she's obviously doing it because she's kind of like gloating, like, haha, it's me. You could have just done that at the end. You didn't need to do that at the beginning. You know, by the end, I mean when they have them captured, yeah. not in the when fucking introduction. Yeah. My favorite part was the super accurate turret. It made me very scared of the Enclave. However, you Dumbo shouldn't be scared of playing DDLC. Do it. Well. <laughs> Maybe one day. Maybe one day. But, uh, yes, the Enclave are very, very scary. Those turrets, uh, I've seen people argue that uh, it makes way more Ugh. sense that the turret doesn't hit you because of, um... You know, and then just list of experiences they've had in the games that totally make it accurate. 
I know when they shoot at me in the games, I go, oh shit, I should take cover. Not, I can just stand here and I'll be fine. I think that yeah. you well, lose. People, why do people who say they're fans of the game constantly like lie about the game or shit on the game? I think you lose both ways, right? Because let's say, for example, they are notorious in the game, that designed to just never hit a target. It's like, why the fuck are the Enclave using it? What is the point? What's the point of creating a weapon that's known to just constantly miss? It's like worse Gnarly than random. It's when firing a million bullets. Exactly. You'd be better off. You'd be better be a off. a noisemaker. Yeah. 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 Or, or just yell, hey, halt, so that someone Stop right with there. a reliable weapon can come get you. So dumb. And as has been said before, it's just so funny. They could have just cut that scene and everything gets better. It's just a strict improvement. We, they could have used, uh, they could have replaced it with maybe giving a reason why Wilzig doesn't like the Enclave. Oh, you mean like character building or something? Like character motivation for the basal, like foundational inciting incident of the plot? That'd yeah, be cool, that yeah. would be, that'd be kind of fucking cool. Then again, everyone's supposed to be stupid, so fuck it, whatever. Woohoo, stupid. It's a really great show, it's good stuff. It's just like the games. I was completely expecting dog meat to be the real MacGuffin. The head would just be a way to get the dog to follow. Am I the only one? Uh, you might be. I didn't think that. Uh, I I couldn't for the life of me figure out what the fuck they were doing with that dog. Like, um, it's rare for a piece of fiction to waste a dog, in terms of emotional payoffs yeah. and stuff. They, and somehow they managed it. Like, media is notorious for using dogs. In all kinds of ways. Yeah, this show, it, it, uh, it, it defied expectation. Best cheese type? American is not an option. American? I don't, I don't, I don't know why American gets poo-pooed. That's a... I, totally well, I guess not an option right. because they want to know what the answer is, excluding that, if you were going to choose it, maybe. Yeah, that'd be it. You know? I don't know. I like Pepper Jack, I guess. Um, Gruyere is pretty neat. I'm not a big cheese guy. I like cheese. I like loads I like of cheese. Kinds of I'm cheese. a big fan of cheese, you know? But I, I couldn't really tell you much about any specific kind of cheese. Yeah, I mean, I'm pretty much the same. Just not a cheese connoisseur, but I have no, uh, no, no aversion to such, such a thing. Uh, saying it's satire is an excuse for snobs to hit you with the media literacy stick for not agreeing with their stupid opinions. Well, that's where it can end up. A lot of people... I think there is a discussion to be had about the nature of satire. I tried to say on the stream that if you said... If you had, a, like, a lot of, I don't know, consistency criticisms of the characters of Austin Powers, you will find yourself eventually talking about satire and how it works. Uh, same for South Park. There's, there's a lot of things that do it, but, like, we should never... It feels like someone like, had a meeting that we went a part of that said, as long as you're satire, you're good. There's no such thing as bad satire. Which is like, whoa, I never agreed to that. No. Yeah, I don't approve. Oh, I didn't even get to vote. Ridiculous. Because I would have voted differently. I would mm -hmm. have been like, there are good and bad ways to do satire. That's where the talent comes in. Uh, oh my god, Mola. Doesn't Mola this exact thing happen in Insert Shitty Bethesda Fallout here? God, how stupid can he be? I've gotten a lot of that. Clearly, he hasn't played any Fallouts. <laughs> I always felt kind of bad for the the gaming section, right, which was built from a lot of other people's work, uh, and then, you know, like, it was my commentary and a combination of, like, information plus scripting and stuff. It went through them, they would have gotten the correct visuals, they approved the segment, it's so that there's, there's a reference to, like, the gaming side of things, because uh, I'm just not as familiar as, let's say, Indigo Gaming, or Mark the Cyborg, or Kretosis, and... Uh, it was definitely a I defer to them sort of moment, as we all have our sort of uh, specialities when it comes to particular fictions. And so when people say, like, you know nothing about the game evidenced by that section, I'm like, you don't even, it's not even me you have an issue with. I almost feel bad. Like, it's, mm -hmm. you're shitting on people who live and breathe and know everything about Fallout. So I just don't believe you when you say, like, you don't know nothing. And yet, they feel confident in saying it. Um, the Skyrim was my girlfriend comment is just. Ugh, we've had, we've had quite a year for you, haven't we? Yes, we have already, and so much more to come.
Well, I mean, it's what is it? Two and a half months until the anniversary. Isn't that crazy? Yeah. We'll be closing out. Is it year six? Oh my god. Getting old. We're gonna do it year ten. Have, mm. to have some kind of celebration. Even though we always have a celebration, but this one will have to be because like ten is you know you, you, legally allowed to. Uh, what can we can do at ten? Nothing interesting, I guess. Maybe when the show is uh, 18, that's what's when it'll be super special. I don't know if we're going to make it to 100. But we'll by see. gum, we'll try. Hey, you know. uh, why is Forrest Gump so well-loved? It's a really good movie. I feel like it is. It is a pretty strong movie. <laughs> um, and it's like an inspiring movie. I think it certainly can be described that way. I think a lot of people found it to be that way. It came out the right time as well, I think. Uh, yeah. It's kind of hard to say. It's it's actually a movie that, when you look back, you're like, isn't it neat that something like that could be successful? Yeah, I'd say so. Compared to what what is required to be successful these days, that sort of thing. Uh, boom, boom, boom. A bunch of drunk slavs can make a better Fallout game. Stalker is better than Fallout. Is that even controversial, though? People like Stalker, don't they? A lot. As far as I know, people like Stalker. I tried to play the one that they said was the really good one, but it was... It was... Janky and, and weird. Hmm. But... I don't know. I've, I've certainly enjoyed Fallout more, but I haven't really played Stalker much. Fair enough. Uh, the law breaks are bad, but the writing is all contrived and full of stupid characters and plot holes. Agreed. Good luck with season two, I suppose, right? Oh, right. Uh, uh, the Fallout video was so good, and the Fallout is garbage. Please check out Freerun Beyond Journey's End for a truly great show. All right. Fair enough. God, Finn got robbed so unbelievably hard. Yeah, did you have you what seen of, people getting to be a character? Well, because you know, like in the video, there was that moment of like people didn't like Finn and Rose because they hate anyone who's non-white. It's like you're so off the mark; you have no idea. <laughs> you just yeah, you have no idea what you're talking about. It's just funny because there's a perfect world where Finn got to be at least the one character who makes it through the trilogy without being shit. You know, we didn't get that world, but it's out there in the multiverse, maybe. They teased us with an interesting concept for a character, and it just, like, it was interesting for about six minutes. I think that that tease works so well that there would be people that when the uh, they'd finish the film, they would be talking about things that didn't even happen, like the journey of the stormtrooper that's turned on the Empire, you know, like, a whole bunch of references that probably didn't even exist, and I wouldn't even necessarily blame them, because I think it's what we do to compensate sometimes, when it's just like... The uh... idea is the thing. It's like you just you want that story so much you start to imagine it was there when it wasn't there at all. When it wasn't there. Uh, also, hi Rags. How is Rags? Hi. I'm doing a okay. Things are all right. I see. Wonderful. Amazon saw Shady Sands through some shady uh, shade sandy shades. Oh, I got you. I got you. Shady Sands through sandy shades. Rue. Oh. Uh. New Vegas DLC Dead Money strips you of every single item at the beginning. The only workaround is a headpiece and mask because they're quest items. Hmm. I uh, wouldn't know anything about that. Yeah, I think that's one I didn't actually play. I can't remember. It's been a long time since I've uh, played. I don't think I really got into the DLC nearly as much as the um, um, the base game. In Fallout 4, both Fridge Kid and Eddie Winter are ghosts that had, sorry, ghouls that had no way uh, to get serum for 200 years and haven't gone feral. Yeah, well. Yeah, Shut well, up. don't it's think canon. about it, because the show's supposed to be stupid. I mean, if you said this to um, the showrunner, I'm pretty sure he'd say, like, well, yeah, but they had a, uh, they, you know, not all ghouls, most, but not all, uh, require this. So there you go. And then he would smile, and he would talk to people about how, isn't it sad that that's what they care about instead of the story? And you'd be like, oh, yeah, you got me. 
Are origins, oh, sorry, are oranges called oranges because they're orange? Or is the color orange called orange because oranges are orange? The orange came first. The color. Or sorry, the, the fruit came first. There you go. I was about to say, initially, you gave an answer where I, I thought to myself, that doesn't answer anything. I like the answer, orange came first. Great. <laughs> <laughs> um... I had a dream where EFAP was going as normal, but everyone would end their statement with a fact about chocolate milk and no one was acknowledging it. That is an interesting, <laughs> what, that is an interesting dream. It. What's crazy about that dream is that it's so likely that that's just actually a thing that occurred. Could have been that, a uh, thing that happened for like a half hour or so, yeah. yeah. Uh, Nate's military service ended two years before annexation of Canada. And uh, he also received the power armor training, but never wore it. This is impossible. It's what we read out at the time. It's to do with the um, the war crime thing. That uh, bafflingly uh, was used to support the idea that people care more about uh, like lore accuracy than story when everyone was complaining you made a character a war criminal, which is not what they wanted. It, to me, that seems like they care about the story, not just random accuracies. You can care about both. Crazy. And you can try and deflect whenever fans complain about some stupid shit that you did. If you deflect to something else, like, no, no we have a problem with that, too. Yeah, that's true. Uh, obviously, what I'm trying to get at is just that uh, it's, an, it's an ironic thing to be like, you, you fuckers, this is what you care about. And it's like, that's not what that represents. But also, we should be allowed to care about that. Uh, it's a weird world we're in. We're the creators of IPs that spend like painstaking amounts of effort and time into making these worlds eventually have people take over that are just like oh whatever that part doesn't matter and that's fine because you know yeah. eh. the lack of effort on these scripts it's insane it's, it's wild unreal. when it's everything it and everything unreal. follows on from it it's crazy go downstream from it uh it's even funnier when you can have Nate be racist to a Chinese officer in Fallout 4. <laughs> All right. Uh, Moldava shouldn't have waited 15 years to attack Vault 33 and let Lucy grow to adulthood if it were for her have a chance to survive, since bullets wouldn't have bounced right. Oh, they're saying that uh, had she attacked while Lucy was a child, it would have been uh, more healthy for her because obviously bullets and knives would have bounced right off her. That's right. Uh, fair point. That's the Fallout lore. It's a Fallout lore reference, yeah. Really good. People can like slop, but much Starfield, it's graded a curve compared to Halo and other shit. The show is much like BGS Fallout is jam-packed with iconography from Fallout 1 and 2 in New Vegas, uh, which Bethesda takes all credit. Uh, I'm not sure if the implication of what they were just saying was that it's like, it's not it's not as bad when compared to Halo, which is something that I don't like. <laughs> um, no, I think that I think that they're comparable in terms of the writing. Halo and Halo and uh, Fallout are comparable in terms of the bad writing. Oh yeah, easily. It's, Halo's got like more obvious cringe. I think maybe that might have something to do with it, or or maybe that like Fallout more so captures the aesthetic of a uh, of Fallout, whereas Halo is very much worse at doing that. Yeah, I'm not sure because, like, in terms of the writing and the contrivances and everything, like that's comparable. Emily I guess just... it's it's a really fortunate advantage that there's seems to be so few people who actually care about storytelling. They just want to see references. It it literally is just like aesthetics for so many people. I saw power armor. I saw a thing from the game story. Whatever. Well, yeah, because that's something that's worth remembering, right? Is like, well, what do you think the playbook's going to be for other things where maybe satire isn't going to be the kind of argument that people would accept uh, if, it's a, if it's a different franchise? What if the same kind of approach gets taken and we can essentially do whatever we want, but let's make sure that the aesthetics are nailed for some other series? You know, what happens in Bioshock, right? Like, if they do it and then the writing sucks, it's like, well, you see, it's satire. I He'll don't think a different reason. Oh, we're just having it's fun. Much, but... It's just a kid's show. It's just satire. Oh, well, they're, they're, it's, a, it's thematic. It'll always be some random, totally different excuse. I don't know. The satire one is particularly funny because it feels like such a non sequitur. 
It's satire. It's like, okay, and what? Yeah. <laughs> like, okay, now what? Well, the the undercurrent, as people have pointed out, is there is a little bit of like, oh, you didn't get it. It's like, what do you mean? What, what what did I not get? And it's like, it's making fun of X. And you're like, no, I I got that. Everyone yeah, no, got I that. I know exactly what the goal is. That's <laughs> that's kind of like the importance, though, understanding what the goal is and still pointing out how it doesn't work anyway. So, I mean, the video uh, that, w that ended up being made in totality is just, there's so many references to how, like, stop telling me. They don't want you taking it seriously. They want you to, like... They obviously do want you to take it seriously. Come on. Like, how often does Come South on. Park have the, uh, someone gets killed and it's played, like, dead serious? Yeah, I mean... Ever? <laughs> like, <laughs> well, I, you know what's funny? The only time I can think of where it's played straight, it's still a joke. Do you remember in Imagination Land, um... When Man Bear Pig comes through the portal and attacks everybody, and uh, and like Kyle gets seriously injured to the point that it looks like he might have died, and then it plays like a really dramatic moment of Cartman trying to save his life, and it's like played very dramatically. But the undercurrent is well, he wants to save his life because once he does, they had an agreement in place that if he could yeah. prove leprechauns are real, that Kyle had to suck his balls. <laughs> so the only reason he's saving him in this incredibly sad, dramatic moment is to get him to do that. So, like, yeah, even in South Park, when they do it, there's a joke, <laughs> you know, belying it. Well, like, uh, I, I, the one of the things I went through straight was uh, uh, Make Love Not Warcraft, when Randy's dying, he has to pass the sword, <laughs> you know? Yeah, yeah. Oh. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> then he just takes the headphones off casually. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Or, or I guess um maybe like the closest you could get is in the movie when uh when when Kenny goes to heaven, right? Like that's played yeah. straight. Um but man, like yeah, but once even that, or twice to end it. <laughs> yeah. Cuz you know the song know. kicks in, right? Cuz like little boy it's a choir. peace. And then it's, it's just, like wonderful that is little boy's go to hell. Oh. Oh no no no! I meant uh, I meant right at the end of the film uh, when he when he uh, oh, takes okay. off his uh, hood and then says goodbye to his friends before going to heaven. That feels like one of the few instances where, seriously, maybe the only instance off the top of my head I can think of where South Park played a moment completely like straight. Well, and again, you see these patterns because this is tonally speaking how it's done to properly execute like how the audience is going to reflect because. I think that a lot of people, when re-watching it, will be baffled by some of the stuff in the show, and they'll be like, how did I miss this the first time? It's like, yeah, because you're obviously distracted by... One of the big keys, which is mentioned in the video, is the um, the nature of the, the show going on. Just the fact that it's happening at all. You're watching it. Yeah. You, you don't have a judgment yet. You're just like, you're well, I'm just... it in real time. Yeah, I'm you're just having fun. You're along for the ride, and you've given them... You've given them something that uh, they've taken for granted, which is that you're giving them a shot. Yeah. You're going to sit... You're going in in good faith, you could call it that. And see, yeah, and you're going to wait and see what they have in mind for their story. You know, who doesn't have, you know who doesn't have any of that right now, uh, you know, at least from our audiences and many others, is uh, Disney. They don't, they don't have that capacity anymore. You can't well, have... Where you can, you'd sit there and, and watch the Marvels and be like, well, hold on, like, that might be silly, but let's see where they're going with it. <laughs> yeah, like, if... Um... You know, if if Peepo Glad was people watching Fallout from the get go, they're just happy and so they're enjoying it. And uh, I would go with Madge is how people treat anything Disney. When you boot it up, that's what they look like already. Yeah. It's like I'm not I'm not interested. And it's like, why are you here? And it's like, well, I'm just I'm uh, to be honest with you, I'm mad at you. <laughs> and Disney would be like, what? What? Why? And you're like, and the thing is, it's you know, it's not, it's not like it's come from nowhere. Yeah. You know? uh, if if you. I mean, it is an unprecedented streak of bad movies and TV shows that they've released to where, yeah, why would you really have any expectation that you're going to get? When you see all of the standard signs of, of, like, Disney writing for, like, you know, Disney Marvel stuff, it's easy to go, ah, okay, yeah, this is going to be some bullshit. And, like, it's, it's, it's always been that way, except for, like, No Way Home. It's, like, the only one. Yeah. And, you know, but, if you're yeah. actually good, it's going to take a while for people to believe it. Like, they'll see a scene that's good and be like, hmm, I don't know. It might have yeah, been Yeah, and good. it's kind of the know. nature of uh, when you rewatch it and you know where it's all heading, that's where something really interesting happens when you watch a movie or a TV show is, does the show improve or decline when you rewatch it? Mm. It's an important test. Because a lot of things decline <laughs> when you rewatch, but the really good shit 
improved. You start to notice, oh, and that was setting up that. Oh, that was foreshadowing this moment. Oh, I see how it all connects together. That's awesome. But in the case of Fallout, like you rewatch that and you think about how everything connects together. I would be surprised if that show holds up for a lot of people on a rewatch. And I mean, yeah. certainly the, you know, what we've speculated on what's going to happen when season two comes out and the allure of the first time that you've seen the Fallout world uh, realized in this way with all this money and live action. What happens when that's not a novelty anymore? What happens when, you know, video game adaptations in general are starting to become less of a novelty, which is happening. That's starting to happen very quickly. Um, well, how would you define that happening? What do you mean? The thing about it is, to me, is I feel like that's actually an infinite well, uh, a little bit anyway, because video game adaptations, we're talking, you know, seeing portal aesthetics on screen for the first time. It's like, wow, then oh, seeing sure, Rapture sure. on screen um, for the first time. Wow, and seeing... But, you know, but something something that is I'm baking into it is that we will eventually get to a point where it stops being a thing on people's mind of, oh, video game adaptation. I should expect something not good. If it was like, we, you know, that's starting to change a lot now. That in, instead of video game adaptations, instead of thinking about the Resident Evil movies, now people are going to start thinking about the stuff that's come out recently. And once that stigma's gone away, and once we're past a point of, well, you know, you can at least... Stick I think once it becomes clear that you can expect that the aesthetics are probably going to match pretty well, and that the music's probably going to be the same, like, once that becomes accepted, I don't know how much that's going to start to work anymore. You know? What happens after, like, the fifth season of Fallout? How much is it going to be worth to see, like, the Fallout aesthetics in live action? I just think that in the same vein with superheroes, which, in a sense, is almost lower scope because it's Marvel and DC... If there were a third company that were as popular as both of them, that had characters as beloved as Spider-Man and Batman, but hadn't hit movie screens ever, and they were, like, for the first time ever this year being brought to it, I don't think that same level of fatigue would be applied to it. Certainly not by nerds, especially if it was a new company Probably and everything. Not. They'd be like, oh my god, here we go. And I feel like, uh, if we, let's say, you know, Fallout was on its seventh season... Same for, like, several other TV shows and movies that are all video game stuff, and then we've got, like, a thousand examples of it being bad. If then they released a $250 million budget movie called Bioshock, and it was done by Peter Jackson, I feel like all of us would be like, holy fuck, this could be amazing. You know, like, um, the, the yeah, fatigue probably. not having I think effect. I would agree that, uh... I would agree that, that, that video games are never gonna achieve that same level of potential fatigue that Marvel had, because... First of all, video games are just more... There's just way more different types of video games compared to Marvel movies or even superhero films, really. Different aesthetics, you know, whether science fiction or fantasy, uh, animated or, like, live action. Um, all of that's going to be the case. And then you just have the fact that they're not all being made by, you know, two companies. It's not just uh, Disney and Warner Brothers that are making... Uh, video game adaptations is basically every company with, with yeah. whether they're tv shows or animated or uh high budget or low budget or you know all of all of those things um but at the same time i do i don't know because i remember seeing it reviews of fallout saying like a lot of a lot of these like reviews that come out will still kind of be talking about the idea of like video game adaptation curse as like a thing that's on people's minds um I, I wonder when that actually goes away, like, completely. Um, and I feel like it's gotta happen soon, where people stop saying that shit, because it feels like, I don't know, it just feels, like, out of date to me. Oh, yeah, you know, like, when I think of video game adaptations, I'm thinking of the Resident Evil movies. It's like, well, I don't know that anybody is anymore. Nah, I feel like at this point, everybody's so. thinking Those about Arcane, or they're happens. thinking about the Mario movie, or they're thinking about, hell, they're thinking about, like, Sonic, or they're thinking about, um, uh, they're Arcane. thinking about, uh, Arcane. I, I thought I said Arcane, but yes, oh. they're thinking about Arcane. Yeah, they're yeah. thinking about The Last of Us. Um, it, it, they, fuck, they might even be thinking about Halo and like, well, hey, at least they got like elites in it or something. <laughs> you know, I feel like we're well the past minimum, the, uh, yeah. the like the two thousands era of video game adaptations, or you know, like Prince of Persia, The Sands of Time, <laughs> like <laughs> that, like that kind of era. Um, yeah, I, uh, I, I suppose I'm curious how. Um, how how long that's going to last in terms of just the 
the sheer appeal of, hey, look, it's the game I recognize with its visuals reasonably uh, faithfully adapted. Maybe even the music as well. Especially if we're going to start having like six or seven of them coming out every year. Yeah, at what point do they just say, you know what, I'll just, uh, I'll just go play the games. All of a sudden I realized I don't need this shit. I've got the games. I'll just go play mm. the games. Well, I mean, uh, you know, superheroes are still far away from their ending, right? Because they've got so many projects in the pipeline to the point of the two Avengers films are still very far off. That's true, but what happens if uh, Superman comes out and makes like 400, 500 million and like the next Avengers film makes less than a billion dollars? The thing is, like I don't even really understand it myself. They've had so many fucking failures in a row, and they just, like, what's the newest attempt? I'm gonna restart it. Okay. Uh, you know I mean, I, mean like I think it? it is pretty simple, isn't it? It's that, um, th I think Disney will forever pine over what they had, which was, like, an unprecedented money-making machine. Yeah. That'll always be what they compare themselves to. Remember, man, remember back in 2017 when every single film we made made like 900 was like you know 800 million dollars plus at the box office that's what they'll be thinking of as even if they keep failing they're still going to be thinking about the good old days when they were making money yeah and you know that they'll be able to be like we must have made one wrong move somewhere what was it? it's like no you guys made like a thousand <laughs> wrong moves it was a the thousand of the worst effects. moves that was the that was the wrong move the not enough supervision like, from uh producers right. that was it Yes. In a, in a yes, much because if Kevin Feige was there, he would have fixed the scripts. Yes. He would have fixed the scripts himself. Not anyone's fault, okay? They just want it's their empire fault. back. They're, they're lucky it took so long for all the fucking, just, uh, the, just the, the sheep, right? let's, let's call them that, to, to kind of... I mean, they're, they're, they're fortunate people have such low standards for content. In a much better world... They would not have lasted nearly this long. It's funny that you say nearly this long, and it's like, it took, it, it was only like two, three years before they ruined everything for themselves. It didn't take them too long to do it. You know, it's from like one division at the beginning of 2021, really, because even though Endgame is a really bad movie, um, I think, a lot, yeah, you know, and it's, it's if you still... look at, if you look at it in the sense of like a calendar, but in terms of the projects, and yeah, it was like 15 many, movies. They were, it was dense. That's the thing. It was yep. so dense in terms of how bad it was. They yep. put out a lot of crap really quickly. It was unprecedented. I've never seen a string of that many bad films from one studio. It's worth remembering. Like a lot of people don't break these things down. They just they treat them in the same way someone might treat uh go into a restaurant, you know, like like the, nothing nothing crazy, just something fun they do every once in a while. They've not thought about it yeah. too much. And so when they watch a uh, a Thor: Love and Thunder, at least, that's a bad example because that's a film that really felt like one of the changing, significant changing ones. But maybe something like a Black Widow, they'll watch and be like, "I didn't really like that one, but yeah, whatever, it's fine." Yeah, you know, it could be just that. But, but um, it eventually, well, enough of them like in a row, that. and you're like, "Wait, why am I watching these?" Yeah, like the last four movies I've seen, I thought sucked. I probably, and you know, I might watch something else instead. Yeah. And, and then it's like the newest extraction is that. I was like, that's more reliable. Newest mm -hmm. this John Wick is obviously liked more than Marvel. Uh, you guys hear they're doing a spin off thing for it as well? Yeah. yeah. Sure they are. Well, they got multiple spin offs at this point, right? Well, yeah, because I, I didn't hear anybody talk about the Continental. I don't know what happened with that. Until well, there was that. And then there's, uh, isn't there Ballerina? That's like another spin off that they're doing. With Anna de Armas, Anna right? De yeah. yeah, so you got that and, then, that, and then this new one that they've announced. And probably John Wick 5 and 6, because why not? Oh, yeah, probably. I know they said 4, they'd be done. It's like, nah. Nah, he'll claw his way out of the, the grave. <sighs> well, he's going to have to go kill all of the fucking people at the top, in at the high table. Yeah. How exciting. And then they got to keep delaying that, probably, as well. Um... They'll keep delaying it so that they can keep making movies. Because doesn't it feel like 3 and 4? It's like, wait, what the fuck's going on? I thought, you know what I mean? Like, doesn't it feel like 3 and 4 were kind of the same in terms of their broad premise? Yeah. He's um... gonna fight the world. It's like, and he's gonna fight the world again and not really make much progress. That's <laughs> it. I don't know. The primary appeal of that fucking movie is dead. I, I'm. Uh, he's a superhero now. He's not a normal person at all. Yeah. 
boring. I don't even know what the fuck they wanted out of the stairs thing. People are like, it's really funny. It's like, why was it? Why, why? Why was this supposed to be a funny part? Like that. And, uh, you know, like, uh, the, uh, the, the fact that these, it's like his death is baited at the end of 4 because they were intending to close it off if it didn't make as much money. Like, if it had done what Dead Reckoning Part 1 had done, they'd be like, alright, goodbye, John Wick. Yep, totally. But it made too much Meanwhile, money, so now they're like, fuck, that's well, that's not the end. <laughs> Isn't it interesting that, um... I know that it's it's uh because Fast X right that was meant to be the first of two to round round it out, but then before it came out they said nah three we're gonna make three, and then it didn't do too well. It's like nah two, yeah. <laughs> and it's the same with Mission Impossible where they said yeah there might be more, and now there won't be. <laughs> this one will be the end. The fact that they had to change it from part one, how is that not the biggest admission of uh, yeah, we yeah we we screwed up. Oh, that was so disappointing. It was. That was so disappointing. I was sitting there in the theater like, oh, I'm so excited. <laughs> this time yeah. was going on. Oh, no. No, 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 no. Stupid AI. <laughs> yeah, stupid AI. Uh, Emil is just a wacky, goofy guy who wants to have a good time between guzzling quarts of Mad Dog 2020. All right. <laughs> Uh, Zorak mentioned. Uh, yeah. That, oh, yeah, that was yeah. me. I mentioned Zorak. Yeah. You get your, you get all sorts of crazy stuff here. You gotta mm -hmm. pay attention. You might miss one. Uh, my Nate is a war criminal who participated in a gang rape of different women every day of his service. Isn't canon fun? Yeah, but that's the thing. That's what I mean about the whole like, oh, you guys don't care about story. It's like you. You obviously do, if it's about the history of a character. How could you not? That's what that means. Uh, Mola, what is the name of the strategy game in your Fallout video? Am I correct in assuming that it is a New Vegas mod? That was uh, Goga footage. I don't know what game he was playing, I'm afraid. But yes, it was definitely a New Vegas mod. Um, wish I could help you on that one. I can always find out from him and... Uh, I can get back to you, maybe, on another stream. Uh, you, we can't... You can't have fanfic be canon when you play in the parameters of a set game with a set story with set actions. What's funny about that... You know, th that's why that tweet is so fucking bad for the state of, like, fiction. Tweeting that out, that's just one step away from the process of how it ends up in a video game. Like, him fucking around and putting that in, out in a tweet, the, the difference is he's, you know, editing some fucking text or writing something in one of the games, and he's just like, I'm gonna put footage from that cutscene here, and I'm gonna say it was this guy. <laughs> yeah, that's cool, that's yeah. a fun little tidbit. Like, there's, there's barely any difference in terms of, you, you gotta, you peered into his mind, and it sucks. You don't wanna know that that's how people <laughs> write the games you love. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's like, it oh, you have fight. so much power over something, and you were just yeah. squandering it. You're destroying this thing that I love, and I hate you. You almost wish that when someone is taking over a definitely a long running franchise, that instead of the reaction being like, "Ooh, this is gonna be fun," it's more of a, "Okay, this is a big responsibility. I got to make sure I do this properly. I got to treat it very seriously." Because, you know, everyone wants to do the happy, fun, good times thing. When mm -hmm. uh, a lot of the greatest projects will have writers who are like, this was hell. But I'm very yep, proud of the work, you know? Does seem that way. Uh, what do you think Emil meant by from Alaska to Nova Scotia? Don't know. I have no clue. Couldn't tell you. Just don't know. Uh, not sure if liking Fallout 4 is allowed around here, but what does this do for the people that do like the Soul Survivor? Sorry, Nate is a war criminal now, is a slap to the face of their, uh, to their own fans. Um, I think you're welcome to like any of the games, really. It's just like a matter of recognizing them for what they are, I suppose, is, is what we consider worthwhile in terms of when we compare and contrast, because I think probably is offensive, at least somewhat, to the best aspects of a lot of the games to be saying the show is just like Game X, you know? The show's yeah, pretty like bad. It. Like I mentioned before, the show... The, to, the defenses that are used for the show 
make the game seem really shitty mm. when it's constantly, oh, it's retarded, just like the games. Oh, everyone's stupid, just like the games. Oh, it makes no sense, just like the games. I I was never under the impression that the games were those things. This is news to me. Yeah. I had no idea. Well, then you just have someone say, oh, Rags hasn't played any of them? And you're like, oh. Well, there you go. I guess I fell in love with something else. That well, yeah, but it's, it's also I'm just particularly just weird and annoying when you yourself are the person in control of you, and you're like, I have <laughs> play, played it a lot, but okay, if you're so sure. Uh, but cool. also, it's just, the show is not called Fallout Asterisk, you have to have played the games to watch this show, okay? That's not what it's called. Oh, it's the typical it's fucking thing. Fallout. Anything that the games can explain away, that's what people use, and then anything that the games get in the way of, they're like, it doesn't matter, it's fine. Yeah. So, really, it's just a case of you're not interested in being rational. Yeah. That's, <laughs> that's all that's, that's happening there. Boring as shit. Absolutely boring. I have some goddamn respect. Uh, Cree, get that aged milk jelly mold out of here. Oh, aged milk jelly mold. Oh, oh boy. Oh. Maximus surviving a nuclear blast in a Pulowski preservation shelter was the most faithful adaptation of the series. Hank navigating power armor to New Las Vegas without a helmet. The least. Oh. Uh, I guess that's what they're saying in terms of how faithful... Something. I mean, uh, there was also questions of fuel and everything, but shut up. It's it's as was said in the video. That's that's you're looking at New Vegas. That's incredible. There you go. Yeah, that's exciting and not terrifying. From that you're thinking. You. Look of, at this shit. Look at the world's shittiest depiction of the New Vegas Strip that you could have possibly and, made. And he's looking at it like, yeah, we're gonna ruin this place in season two. Exactly. Um, and it's worth considering the you're thinking. Like, right now, anybody who thinks positively about it, like, oh, come on, give it a chance. It is kind of cool. Oh, it's going to be blah, blah, blah. You're thinking of, like, a thousand options of how cool it would be. They're going to be picking one of the billion options of how bad it'll be. Yes, they will, like, stun you with the terrible decision that they make <laughs> they... for that idea that they have. And you're not even fathoming that billion set. You're like, wait, why would you do that? Just, and just... and particularly when, the, when they're going to be feeling pretty emboldened after a... Uh... After, oh yeah, you know, they got nothing they stopping anything. them. They did everything yeah. right. Yeah, They're exactly. More power. As far as I'm they've made no mistakes. Self-admitted to be guileless enough that they wouldn't recognize the difficulty of the project they're dealing with, that they prefer to make characters dumb rather than awesome, and that they don't want anyone knowing what their preferences for the games are. Yep, and that right now, the and right now that the reception of the thing that they've created with those attitudes in mind is you have made a show that is equivalent in quality to the best video game adaptation Which ever. Is so fucking dude, imagine making Arcane, yeah. seeing Fallout, and then people saying like, "You guys are the best." Like, yeah, you guys are comparable. I, I don't know. That would be <laughs> oh one of those God. things. Like, oh shit, what do people like about our show? What is it that they like? Do they like the great characterization? Are we wasting time? Like, like, what's or... the point in yeah. doing all this work to make things make sense? What... Why would we scrap the script in the first place, you know, and, and rewrite it because we weren't happy with it? What is, you know, why would we even do that? Dude, if Arcane Season 2 is bad, that's going to be so depressing. If it's great, I'm going to be so happy. I'll, be so, yeah. I'll be so elated. And then, like, Season 3 coming, yes! <laughs> Give it to me. If The Last of Us Season 2 is good, then I'll be like, wow, really? <laughs> okay. That, that'll be a surprise. I'm gonna put That's the one. I'm big old dead, doubt on that one. Concerned about. Yes, myself. I am also. I am, they've I am they've done like behind the scenes right images okay. of uh, certain scenes. I was like, oh god, it's, it's happening. Pretty it's happening. similar. To, yeah, it's looking pretty similar to the game. Uh, I mean, you just got that big problem of Neil Druckmann. That I guess doesn't think he made any it's... mistake. Dude, it's gonna be so fucking weird to have the exact same conversation again, you know? Yes. Like, just a different medium this time. Really weird. Because, well, like, I mean, we're, we're, we're practiced. We practice for this. We're trained. We're like warriors. <laughs> I guess so. <laughs> this is what we have, have trained for the way of the story, the way of the words. Uh, the creators of an IP does not care about their own story slash games, then why should we? I say let them all fade away and create your own. Support indies. Well, support good work, right? Whether indie or not. Yeah. 
Uh, by the way, the Brotherhood of Steel Knight Max sees after getting out of the fridge, East Coast logo means Todd's wrong, claiming the nuke was in 2281, way too early. I've Wait, seen Todd a lot was of... wrong about story for our, in lore? What? I think Kratosis went over some of it in stream, but there's a lot of evidence that suggests Todd's claims about when the nuke happened are very, very wrong, and that they're, they're coping like crazy right now because they realize they fucked How up. They are mega coping. I just Ow. I don't understand why there's doubt in people's minds. Like how, <laughs> anyone who's paid any attention to the games, not just Fallout, but like Elder Scrolls, Bethesda's stewardship over these IPs is like abysmally bad in terms of what it's done for story, lore, retcons, basic gameplay. I mean, they don't give a fuck. They're completely incompetent through and through. When I found. Uh, interesting is the first few like days or week of the show coming out and having any interest in looking at reactions to it. I remember seeing everyone getting particularly mad at the the nuke timeline. I remember seeing that um that blackboard or yeah it was a blackboard right uh, the, the images of that well before anything even like to do with the show. I didn't know what it meant exactly. I was just like oh I guess it's a timeline issue. Um, but I do remember seeing one of the viral responses being like, this doesn't fucking matter. Like, why do you care so fucking much about a date? And I remember reading that being like, uh, I already why know. Why do you care, like, so much about <laughs> you care about the date? Why do you care that they care? Like, why, like, isn't it sad that you don't care in a way? Like, aren't you, like, don't you think it's something of value to say about you as a person that you actually care about things that you have an interest in not just something as a hobby but in you know the generation of a fictional world and a story and a shared piece of culture and uh, in some small i mean god forbid you can't even get dates correctly but some vested effort and maybe trying to preserve elements of our shared culture i think a big uh, disconnect people can have is some people just assume you're only caring about it from like a almost robotic like categorization thing as opposed to knock-on effects like if that's yeah. true then this is true and if that's true then this is true and if that's true then that can't be and that's a thing that i particularly enjoy that's why i'm annoyed like simple as that and then they're like you can just fucking ignore it whatever yeah just hit the switch in your brain that turns it off or makes you ignore it just just choose not to care yeah which is the same thing they say about, like, why are you watching new iterations of anything to do with an IP you no longer like? It's like, because I fucking loved it once upon a time. Uh, well, another one for the trash heap. Fallout is uh, continuing its downward spiral into... Yeah. Into, uh, you know... Into still terrible. making a lot of money. Yeah, unfortunately. <laughs> Hey, Muller, I really enjoy your content, but also enjoy the Fallout show despite its flaws. Interested in a collab of sorts with a growing 2 Uber? I mean, we uh, we collab every week with all kinds of YouTubers, big and small. It's kind of yeah. uh, the way we do it here. No particular system of getting in, though, because, of course, it would be impossible to do it in a fair way. But we have met all kinds of people in all kinds of ways. It's been very fun. Uh, Pokemon Applin Entry Shield and its Evolution line. Is there a Pokemon called Applin? Applin? I'm not familiar with that one. I'm not, not familiar, familiar with, with it, it either. Do you want to give a little look? See, I'll I'll read out the next one because I'm I'm not yeah, sure. Yeah, let what me take a look. Applin almost looks like it's a fucking I don't know an, an it item. Looks like an apple. <laughs> uh, let's see. Make a population side of Jim's subscribe account. You needed to be able to update semi-regularly. I think uh, there's subscriber milestone celebrations, which, to be honest with you, is kind of funny. Like, uh, they're, they're reverse ones, because Jim's lost a shit ton of subscribers since uh, the old Jimquisition heyday. Which is not, not a huge surprise. It's not, not surprising no. to me at all, yeah. Um, <laughs> as someone who watched... Uh, an excessive amount of Jim Sterling's Jimquisition and everything Total Biscuit ever made. There was a time where the Jimquisition was uh, informative and yes. uh, incisive uh, with its industry ago. criticisms. Yeah, All right. but then, I don't know. <laughs> so, I've got the Applin stuff. 
All right. All right. So this is Applin. This is Applin. Oh, I see. Well, that makes a lot of sense. <laughs> Look at him. There is Applin. Now let's do the let's do the um the 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 Pokédex entry. Oh shit! I closed that tab. Applin. Applin Pokemon. The, so the shield entry is what they wanted. So as soon as it's born, it burrows into an apple. Not only does the apple serve as its food source, but the flavor of the fruit determines its evolution. And it has a variety of evolutions. So okay, this... So... Yeah? Oh, oh, I was just speculating on it. Sounds like Applin's kind of like a... Uh, kind of like a hermit crab. Uh... It seems that they, it's like the, so like the worm in the apple as a Pokemon yeah. concept, sort of. Or a, a guy. Oh, that well, lives I know in the that, apple, but yeah. like it's uh, living in the apple and, 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 you know, growing into the apple and stuff. That sounds a bit like Hermit Crab. So this is one of its evolutions. This is Flapple. <laughs> Look at his face. <laughs> Bringy, I think. If you like that one, I think you're gonna love this one. Okay. This is a this is another potential evolution called Appleton. <laughs> He's an old pie. Oh, wow! Look at him. That's great. I really like him. <laughs> I really like him a lot. Oh, big fan. This this here is another evolution for him called Diplin. Oh, I see. <laughs> this one is great. Thing one thing that's special about Diplin is that Diplin can evolve as well. So if he goes down this route, he can evolve twice. So Diplin can evolve into Hydrapple. Oh, wow. What an interesting Pokemon. I really like this Pokemon a lot. I think that's great. I like his evolutions and I like the theme that they have of the apple yeah. and like the, the like a it's like a little lizard worm that it's really more of a lizard than anything else. But uh, oh, a dragon. It's a it's a grass dragon type. I guess that makes sense. Mm. Um, so it's a little bee dragon that goes into the apple and then it can evolve into different things based off, I guess, the flavor of the apple, which I, I yeah, think is a really cool, cool idea. I really like this idea. Creative. Appleton's my favorite. Dragon. The the little chunky dragon that looks like yeah, a pastry. Yeah, that's that's really good. <laughs> I like his his little hat. I just, he's definitely got that like George in the dragon kind of uh kind of look about him. I really, really he like, like he likes to snooze, you know. Like all of these are kind of neat. Um, but that's I think, so. I think he's my favorite. I really like that one the most. I'm telling you, Pokemon's got some. They even the new ones. They really got some some really good, like designs and concepts. As long as it's not keys or a chandelier, that's fine with me. Like uh, Beauty and the Beast. Uh, maybe that's where they got their inspiration from. Who knows? I wonder where they left the ice cream. Hmm. This show actually did inspire me to start working on a 2D20 Fallout campaign. I had doubts I could make a good storyline before, but after watching the show, I know I can make a better plot. There we go. I That's hope so. Because <laughs> like, all you have to do is uh, have a character that has values and acts upon those values. So best of luck. <gasps> I think you can pull it off. What if Mr. House had created Rapture? Conversely, what if Andrew Ryan had saved New Vegas? What if Rapture was Ryan's solution to the nuclear war and fallout? Would they be allies or enemies? That's my dream spinoff. I feel like I they'd be competitors. I think they would be rivals. Yeah, yeah, they would be competitors. With I think that they would admire each other in a way, but they would be, uh, they would be in competition. But one of the things that's, that, that's really great about this scenario is that I can imagine Andrew Ryan in New Vegas, and I can imagine Mr. House in Rapture. I can imagine them because they have personalities, and mm. there's things that they desire and want to do, and they're very similar in a way. So I, I can imagine that, and it's not really much of a stretch of the imagination to do that. Yeah, it's like infinitely fun and cool, the idea of Mr. House touring Rapture. See what he thinks of it and stuff. Uh chats you could have with Andrew Ryan, all that sort of thing, back when the notion of any kind of multiversal crossover could be filled with substance, but uh, we, don't, we, don't, we don't typically do that anymore. 
kind of crazy that one of the better examples we've gotten is the Spider-Man one. So, yeah. That's just keeping the characters acting in such a way that matches who they are. Again, the the bar is pretty low, but, you know, we'll take it. Yeah. Rings of Power was so universally disliked across political lines that even the slayer of the dreaded woke, woke bros called it bad. That's true. He, uh, his video was, which is kind of a part that I don't know how many people even talked about, his video was about how it was bad. You know, he, he went after the woke bros, but he also said, like, Rings of Power is bad, because like I think everyone thinks Rings of Power is bad, because it's bad. Very Nobody few defenders, it, it seems. The there weren't way. many at the beginning, and there seems to be very few that stuck around. Yeah. Let's be honest, why would you stick around? You got nothing. I will be fascinated to see what they try and do to course correct Rings of Power, because they spent a shit ton of money mm -hmm. on the IP and the production on what is ultimately an extremely shitty show. That show is garbage. It was particularly funny that the trailer came out for season two, and the, the thing that went viral was just how silly it is that people don't recognize... What's his name? Fucking... Totally not Sauron, just because he put a wig on. That, 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 like, nobody, you know, like with TV show trailers, everyone was like, oh, oh what's, what's this going to do? This character, this character, this character. Everyone was just talking about his wig. <laughs> <laughs> All that money. Everyone's just talking about a wig. Hmm. Oh. Sad, isn't it? Oh, well. They earned it. Uh, I'm they still amazed it. that the Bond film Spectre copied Austin Bond and Dr. Evil Blofeld as brothers and expected people to take it seriously. Yes, they did. They cop That was like Austin Powers trying to be absurd and they ended up doing it. It's, it's fucking insane. And uh, not liked by basically anybody, that movie. At least as far as I remember. Do, do, do. I hated this show from day one. Glad you joined us. Uh, I don't know who you're talking to because I didn't like this from episode one we either. Hated <laughs> it for, we hated it from episode one as well. Well, that's the thing. I wouldn't call it hate. I was just like, I'm not interested. This looks uh, like crap. Yeah, lame, that's lame. fair. Yeah, I I really didn't like it, and I didn't really want to watch anymore. Mm. But uh, you know, well, <laughs> L I guess has it's many good forms. To be knowledgeable, knowledge is power, as, as they, they say. say. As no one complained that Lucy, or noticed, oh, I think they mean as no one complained or noticed that Lucy, when she discovers her husband is in a radiation-filled raider, oh, is a radiation-filled raider, that she now has a radiated coochie, her ovaries become glowworms, total green eggs, and ham man, what the frell? I just assumed that's not I how it works. Think, yeah, I, I think that's just you being weird. Yeah. <laughs> they, uh... The radiation in the world of Fallout can be solved with the Radaway, right okay? And she got it. She's fine. That's right. She did get Radaway. Right so it's gone now. I'd rather run into a wild bear in the woods than someone who thinks the Fallout show is objectively good. You can reason with the wild bear. That's true. The wild bear is, to some degree, rational. Well, yeah. Ask the wild bear if he thinks it's good. He'd tell you no. He'd be like, nah, I didn't, I didn't like it myself. Anyway. Yeah. <laughs> that's, that's what he would say. That's it. Uh, thank you for your review, Mauler. Fallout show is giving me TFA flashbacks. People praised it because it had a bunch of flashy scenes and member berries, but it wrecks the story, the lore, and sabotage future installments. Yeah, sure did. Uh, it's the impossible not to see pattern that, um, it is inevitable that season two will not only be worse, it'll not explain things from season one, or it'll contradict them, and it'll just fuck up the lore even more. Yep. It's just, that's what, that's what we're in for. We've seriously got to drop the expectation that season two will make things better. We always do that, every time. <laughs> I don't get it, though. When the first season was so bad, why would you expect it to just suddenly get it better? Got, yeah, it got rewarded for its badness. Uh, it's just a retcon straight up. In New Vegas, which is in 2281, the NCR is repeatedly stated in-game to be in active contact with Shady Sands. So how? Uh, well, well it, Todd's cope is that it happens after that. It's just the... It's, as, as plenty of people pointed out, and I completely agree with, why did they put a date for every event on that board except the bomb? 
the most important one. That's really strange. And I just like, if I'm Todd and I have the showrunner to this Fallout show coming to me and saying, yeah, we want to nuke Shady Sands. I'm like, you know, call me closed minded, but I'm saying no, no, I don't care how you just, just don't, don't fuck around with it. No, don't do that. Oh yeah, well, I mean. What's wrong with you? You got that clip with the riot, it's like, let's do it. Then he's like, whoa, that's, okay, if you really want, but we all know Todd was like, huh, okay. <laughs> like, you could want to blow it up, that'd be kind of funny, yeah. Do you Whatever it. people buy our shit anyways. Todd himself nuked Shady Sands, he told me over a romantic dinner one night. He said that the, he did specifically because he actually hates New Vegas. Oh my god. There it is. Over a romantic dinner. Is Nerd Seas a portmanteau of Nerd and Nazi? Yes. Uh, yeah, it is. Very clever. Thank you for yes. saying good Fallout games, Fringy. Yeah, that clarification needs to be made sometimes, you know. Uh, you guys just don't appreciate that when there's a railroad, you can't have a western or post-apocalyptic show. A wasteland needs to change by resetting. Yep. I see a single car in my wasteland, then I know it's not a wasteland anymore. And you not ruined allowed. everything. Not allowed. Don't you dare fuck up the genre. My god, it's such a weird thing to hear a fucking seasoned writer, director, showrunner man say. Backward ass logic is that. See. If they had insurance in the cowboy days, it would mean they're not cowboys anymore. Uh, da, da, da. Appreciate Rag's patience to not bark at the dog. Yeah. Well, he seemed like a nice guy. I had my eye on her. I guess her. I she she seemed like a nice gal. Mm hmm So you know, I keep my eye out though. You never know. You know how people are. If you guys haven't seen Bethesda Never Understood Fallout by 20 Sided, I would highly recommend it. It's four years old, but still addresses many of the problems of the show. Uh, yeah, I, uh, oh. I checked out a couple of videos, actually, about the history of Fallout and how it fell to pieces. It's, uh, it's interesting. Interesting journey. A uh, sad one at that. Uh, there were cars in the Spanish-American War. Progress is simple, uh, important to a story because that's how real life is. Red Dead Redemption 2 does this really well. The end of an era and the start of another. This is just the most fucking known... This is what I mean by, like, I can't believe I heard that from him. Everyone knows this is a thing. Fucking lose the genre of post-apocalypse if we enter a particular, like, set of vehicles or operations in a particular building. It's so sad. And so limiting, because you know that his response to it all is, well, time to nuke it. Like, wow. And yet, I'm told, from the video we watched, that uh, nuking Shady Sands made the most sense. It just did. Which makes the most sense, yeah, If you man. look at the I law, mean... it makes total sense, which Hank had nothing to do with. Crazy, that. Uh, I wish Season 1 was all before the nukes dropped to show us how advanced humanity had become, and then nuke it like Howard the... How would the Lair likes. Also, their lack of advanced tech in the scenes before nukes. I mean, I just, just redo it. Scrap the fucking season. Redo it. Awful. More than happy to keep plenty of the actors, alright? It's not so much the story. Playing Fallout 4 Sims Settlements 2 while listening to this, this mod's writing blows the show out of the water unironically. Oh, yeah, I mean, wouldn't surprise me, you know? Playing Fallout 4, oh wait, yeah. People need to stop fucking conflating the instability of the NCR in the Vegas region as the NCR's overall state. It's not. Inland NCR is more stable. Too bad, they pretty much wiped off the fucking map. Yep, I don't, and they don't even care to consider how he got the new, like, they, they, they just totally just say he did it. He just nuked a whole city. How? I don't know. How did he have mm. access to that? How did he manage to do it? How did he, I don't know, he just did. That's just a thing that they basically just don't even bother hand waving. Them pesky vault techers, that's the, they did it. Oh, don't like them. Nope. Problem with Shady Sands is that it gets rid of the NCR and the story acts as if the whole country never existed. Same with the New Republic and TFA. Both wanted a certain setting without doing the legwork. True. 
Well, I apparently assume. people from the NCR are just a bunch of random savages anyway. Oh, yeah. I mean, like I said, people still disagree on what the fuck that even was, those people. Whether they uh, NCR that have a switch that turned them into raiders, or if they were just raiders, or if that's just how the NCR operate. Who knows? Because it's a wasteland and everyone's a crazy psycho. Isn't that fun? Yeah, it's the best. Enclave is the evil faction NCR. The NCR was deploying troops into New Vegas by train. They had the government infrastructure to build and maintain railway networks, roads. They were struggling to rebuild civilization, but no, they're corrupt now. Hi, Rags. Hi. Well, they're not just corrupt, they're fucking gonzo. Yeah, they had a standing army, they had taxes, they had infrastructure. You know, obviously it's difficult to do because of, you know, the setting. You know, scarcity of items and things like that, potentially, but... Like, civilization's gonna get rebuilt. Mm, as much yeah. as the show doesn't like that idea. Give me a kiss to build a dream on, and my imagination will make that moment live. Give me what you alone can give. A kiss to build a dream on. Ow, oh, sweet. Death of a stable nation is the best thing for it. Just, Apparently. Yeah. Eggman knocking the moon in half because Shadow peed on his wife is unironically a more compelling villain arc. That makes more sense. <laughs> I'd consider knocking the moon in half if Shadow peed on my wife. It would be up there on the list. I don't know if I'd go through with it, but I can understand Eggman, you know? A shilling for the fallout meter. Watch your rads. Will do. Summary, stop disliking what I like. Yeah, I mean, there's just so little insight, so little understanding the perspective of the people who disagree. Another thing that sucks about a lot of these videos is that they're hyper narrow-minded and treat everybody outside of the uh, the bubble or purview as, as just insane. Because I understand with perfect fucking clarity why everyone liked the Fallout show. Very straightforward. A lot of the shows that exist in its same similar format have like those things that are appealing but unfortunately they're not very meaningful we see it oftentimes the people who have channels based around storytelling and you know fictional ips and franchises have extremely little imagination everything's a dichotomy like well so you wanted the ncr to control the whole world huh that oh, would be their would be their counter to it yeah it's either one crazy end or the other crazy end where there's no spectrum, there's no degrees along the way, there's no middle ground. Reminds me of, uh, so Luke wouldn't change over 30 years? Like, that's, who even brought that up? What's who are you going talking on? to? Yeah. You just want to stop and be like, is, actually, are, is the person you're talking to, is he in the room with us right now? <laughs> Point to him. Can we see him? What's he wearing? Uh, watch as next season will explain the plot hole that vault Tech obviously acted preemptively by having the reveal that China was suing for peace. I don't even know if they'll mention China. Ever. Yeah, we'll see, I suppose. This is the thing. The one thing we can expect from Season 2 is an attempt to, uh, maybe lock off a couple of those fuck-ups. But, considering the quality of the writers we've been dealing with, um, I'd imagine they're only going to make things worse by trying to make things better. Probably. It'll be like Halo, where Season 2 does make Season 1 worse while being terrible in and of itself. Mm -hmm. It's complete in its awfulness. It is expanding. Yeah. It has no borders, no boundaries. It could have been so cool to see Lucy have to survive the horrible wasteland all Season 1, and at the end she makes it to the NCR and it's practically a paradise compared to the hell world out there. Um. Nope. Well, the thing about that, that doesn't fit at all with everything else, does it? Like, every, it's, I don't even want to get into how we just need to redo all of it. From the beginning, yep. Because, like, the, part of all of it is the review. Like, everything it builds up to, like, oh my god, my dad nuked Shady Sands, isn't that crazy? And then you're like, yes, that is insane. That, <laughs> like, is, did... that is unbelievable. I, I can't believe it. it, is it actually, in the truest yeah, sense, it, it, it is, is unbelievable. <laughs> I cannot believe that that's even possible. I don't believe your father nuclear-bombed Shady Sands. 
And certainly when people are playing, you know, one, two in New Vegas, they're not thinking, man, you know, and then, and then that guy just blew it up. <laughs> Hard to believe. Because he was a big mad cock. It's all hanky. There he goes. I want uh, TL2 Season 2 to be set in space. I want the TL2 Sasson to be set. I'm not sure. There's a bit of... There's TL2? A couple of, a bit of spelling flimmery with that one, I'm afraid. Yeah, I don't know. Uh, the man said to the doctor, But doctor, I am Emil Pagliarulo, the clown. <laughs> I get it. <laughs> Yeah, and I imagine him dressed up like a clown with a, <laughs> with a big red nose. <laughs> well, that's, uh, well, that's a reference to Pagliacci. Yeah. Yeah. I like it. Um, Lucy says her mum died in the plague of 2077, 2277, along with the chalkboard saying the fall of Shady Sands in 2277. So all evidence in the show itself suggests the nuking of Shady Sands was in 2277. Yeah. So that's one of the ones that makes me think that Todd is definitely fucked up because, or rather, the writers. Um, the question you should have when dealing with Hank went out to get his kids is, wow, he was the overseer, so everyone would know, right? Like, how, how do they account for that? He just and, disappeared for some time, yeah. Yeah, so you have when the ghoul is uh, chopping up his friendo, uh, you have Lucy complaining about how when times are hard, you don't have to resort to cannibalism. Yeah. And she says that, you know, once upon a time, we had in uh, the, the, the plague of 2277, where my dad lost so much weight, he went down, I think she said he went down to 100... I used to know this, it's been a while now. <laughs> it's, it's like 150 pounds or something like that. And um, the, the point of that line, of course, is to let us know what uh, Hank sold as a narrative when he went out to get his kids. So he quarantined everybody into their apartments in the shelter, uh, the vault rather, and that meant that none of them could know that he had left the vault for a week, right? And uh, he came back, presumably with Rose, uh, or rather, he would have come back without her and told Betty the truth, and then those two would have told everyone else they buried Rose even though Rose is alive and a ghoul now, or whatever, you know, out there. Um, and so it's like, uh, okay, but the thing is, they have Lucy say that that happened in 2277, and if that happened in 2277, that means that the nuke would have, like, everything Hank did would have happened in 2277 then. Mm -hmm. So you can't argue, what? So you're telling us that Hank chased Rose out into Shady Sands, he got his kids back, he then went back to the vo uh, vault, then four years later, he nuked it, or he five? Just started to blow it up. Yeah, that makes sense. That's like, and you know what happened there was they wrote it to be twenty two seventy seven, and then they were like, "Oh shit," or they they <laughs> kind of were doing it to sabotage New Vegas. It, this is what I mean. Like, you have to be so incompetent to have fucked that up. Yeah, pretty much. Um, and so people look for alternate mistake. suggestions. Like, how how is it is it malicious? It's like it might be. Maybe, which is crazy. Like, that's nuts. That's actually wild if that's the case, but goddamn, you know? Mm hmm. Um, this, like in 1984, where the movies explicitly tell you who to hate and everyone chants hate at the screen because they were told to. The difference here is that no one's forcing Jim to be this stupid. Uh, there's all kinds of reasons why a bias can come up for something like this, but yes, I've... It's one of the things I think that we've been talking about more and more as time goes on, is don't think a thing just because the fucking story told you to. No. Why Why would you... Why? Why, why would that ever be the way that it should work? The peak of, like, I guess sheepish behavior, right? Where you're just like... But remember, because mm. at one point in the video, it was like, oh, you, you gotta... Uh, how did it go? It was like... Uh, you shouldn't hate the writers. You should hate Hank for making the decision. Just something like that. And it's like no. Yeah. Hank's just a puppet. The writers made him do it. Exactly. And they didn't even. They, they didn't get anything out of it. Like what was so interesting about that idea? Fucking nothing. I'm a smart boy. When I'm upset, I piss in the toilet. There you go, nice. Well, that's the thing. If you piss in the toilet, no one will ever know. Uh, good job, Mio. Jiggle the handle, jiggle the handle, and it all just, all the evidence disappears. Crazy. 
Also, how the fuck did Mr. House ever fail in his calculations if he was at the meeting that decided the fate of the world in which he absolutely would have been given <laughs> all information? Don't think about it. The uh, cope for that is the the, the vault Tech aren't the ones that drop the nukes. They just suggested that they would. Oh, so the ending of the story is totally different than what the ending of the story was as presented in the... Which could be show. something they try to correct for, because... Maybe. Fucking, even yeah. people who like the show do not like vault idea. Tech being the ones that drop the bombs. No one would. I don't know why the fuck they decided to do that. What a stupid decision. Yeah. Uh, especially, like, why the first bombs. Because, I, like I said in the video, there, there are ways to write something akin to something like this. I'm trying to be as, like, you know, really broadening it out as a potential, but... Uh, the way that they sold it was that they were just like, we're just gonna blow up everything to make money. Which is like, whoa. Which is really stupid. Yes, you know what's really good for the economy? No economy. No yes. customers. We're gonna make Kill a new economy customers. where nobody has any where money. Nobody has any money. <laughs> why would you write that? <sighs> why, why are you so... Like, you just wanna... You just wanna ask him, like, are you stupid? You okay. <laughs> I don't want to hurt you. Uh... The NCR was always going to fail because of a cuckoid with a nuke because their actions reflected and is, if you couldn't see it from the start, you're a bigot. <sighs> it's like... Okay. Hank, Hank's completely new, but we're supposed to believe this is something that follows along from age-old lore. It's like, I don't believe you. Ah, uh, come on. Shit. You're pulling You're my lying. leg. You're a stinky. Yeah, nobody likes a stinky. Nope. Uh, the irony here is that Avalon wanted to nuke NCR in New Vegas, but when he did it, they nuked their supply routes, not their capital. Play Trails in the Sky. They wanted to nuke the NCR in New Vegas. Uh, I don't know about that. Uh, obviously, um... I do know that he's been the most critical of the show, which is neat, though. Because it takes a few testicles to uh, do something like that, definitely. I would say. Yeah, definitely. vault -Tec were having their apocalypse party and realized, oh shit, we forgot to nuke LA. It already looked post-apocalyptic, so the nukes were late. Um, I guess all these things will be answered in Season 2 as to the specifics. I'm sure we'll get even more flashbacks. They'll be wonderful. Rags knows about the hole in the back of the fridge because that's how he puts the snow in. Oh. <laughs> We're learning. I mean, normally every answered. day. I thought I just used the, the big door in the front that was not facing the wall. You just open it up and put it in. That's, that's the boring way of doing it. I guess. No one would expect the other way. Exactly. Keep them on their toes. Thoughts on Todd saying Fallout will never be set outside of America to preserve the Americana of the series largely inspired by an Australian film? That's, uh, that's kind of funny because my guess would be that if Fallout had continued under the, like, original studio or, you know, continued with Obsidian, that the idea of leaving the United States would definitely be, like, a possibility. But certainly, yes, now there's no way. I could never imagine them doing a Fallout that isn't in America because of how much of a... Yeah. How, just how embedded a lot of the aesthetic of Fallout is in, like, 50s America. Could you imagine them doing it and not having the fucking Vault Boy there? Like... Yeah. They, well, they yeah, because now minds. I'm imagining what if he had, like, a, a version of the Vault Boy, but he was British and he was wearing, like, a top hat or something. You know? Like... <laughs> I mean, and, and the, the they, potential is enormous like a, he by was, taking he it He was to... called, like, Vault Chap or something. Yeah. Vault the, Lad. <laughs> there's no... Like, when people speculate about the next God of War, taking him to all kinds of different cultures, it's the exact same thing. We would want to see more stuff, but, like, it's almost like a different dimension. Like, let, well, let's yeah, see how it works. Uh, it's, it's the same uh, reason why um, there's a lot of appeal in Grand Theft Auto doing a game that's in, like, a satirical version of a different country. Yeah. That would be real, But they probably would never not be in America either. Um, and, you know, maybe maybe the lame part is that, th from a marketing perspective, it's just always better off to do that for these sorts of franchises. That any time that you set it somewhere else, you'd be better off setting it in America. Because yeah, people it's... recognize those places more. You know, New York I feel and, like it's like... and L.A. 
roll in the dice and the it'll like one through five means it performs worse than the American version, but there's a chance you'll create something that everyone loves even more than the original. It's like, is it worth the risk? I mean, yeah. Probably not. Pro which is the reason why, yeah, I'd be surprised if there was ever a Grand Theft Auto that wasn't set in the United States. Um, despite the fact that you could have something really interesting of like, you know, Grand Theft Auto in a different country. I mean, I know that there was the the really, really, really back in the day, the the London one. But you get the deal. And yeah, Fallout, no way. I mean, the fact that they weren't even willing to set their show in a place that they've, you know, never been before either is fascinating to me. That they were like, yep, do it LA, and then we'll set up New Vegas instead of, I don't know, Chicago or something, or Sad. Seattle, or Texas. Just seems like a missed opportunity. Why wouldn't you do it in a different place? I mean, um, even Fallout 76 was willing to be like, yeah, Appalachia. Appalachia, we'll, we'll yeah. A, yeah, we'll go it out there. Is it Appalachia or Appalachia? I don't know. I've heard both ways. Yeah, I feel like I've heard both ways too. So now I'm not sure. Yeah, but yeah, that's kind of that's Northern kind of bold. On the Ozarks you know? or the Florida swamp. That is bold, honestly. Louisiana like Spokes. setting it in Appalachia. That's like a that's an unexpected setting. That's like a yeah. huh, that's kind of cool. But you know, I, I hope the next Grand Theft Auto. I know it's been a long time since we've been to been to uh, Liberty City, but. I really would like them to go to a new location, like a rendition of Chicago would sounds like it could be really cool. Or like the Great Lakes area. Oh, that feels like that could be really cool if you had like uh that it, that in this map the central area is the ocean area, you know, a lake in, the, in this case and then you can move between them to go to uh to go to major cities like along the uh along those uh lakes. It feels like it could be cool, but I don't think that's happening. No, the expansive potential of Fallout is just shrinking with every fucking iteration that's added on. It's like, oh god, we're not even doing Flanderizing itself. Nuking their factions, so... That's yeah. true, because everything needs to stay the same. Well, like, imagine no, we had a changing. lot of fun, and, uh, you know, it's a bit of a stretch, but they spent, like, loads of money on this program to send a whole bunch of vault tech people to the moon, and to set up a whole colony there. And you could have a yeah. whole story about that. It's like, that sounds like it'd be really fun. It's like, yeah, we're not doing that ever. Yeah, that's probably okay. not happening. <laughs> you might as well abandon that as a, as a thing to be excited about. Rags, I need your ah. top quality jokes. Um, well, what are you waiting for, Rags? Oh, okay. Uh, let me see. Uh... Oh, all right. A farmer had 297 cows in his field, mm -hmm. but when he rounded them up, he had 300. Oh, I don't mind that, actually. It's yeah, it amusing. is all right. Yeah. yeah. Amusing joke. Don't feel too bad. Yeah. Nobody laughs, even though you wouldn't know, because, you know. You know, some people <laughs> don't get that. Uh, Did they like Yeah, out? I can believe I can understand why people just don't get jokes sometimes, like, where it's just like, wait, hold on, what? Oh, I see, yeah. Uh, there are 66 years between the Wright Brothers' successful flight and the Apollo 11 moon landing as an example of how fast humans can progress. Hi, Rags. Hello. No, I everything stays the same. Like, you know, 300 years after the bombs drop, yeah, that maybe things might look a little bit different no. by then. Yeah. No, that's, yeah, exactly, no, you're right, no. And if anything manages to sneak past us, we'll nuke it. Like, we'll blow oh, it up. All right, you guys are fun. Can't wait to see your next fucking thing. And that's you know, the thing; they probably probably... like, like, what do you guys think? What's what's the expected amount of seasons you reckon that Fallout will get? Um, I'm gonna go ahead and guess maybe like Three. four, or five seasons. I think I want to guess four. I think two will do a bit worse, and then three will be oh god, we should probably end, and then they get one more. Hmm. But uh, I could be very wrong on that. We'll see. You know what? Maybe yeah, they'll improve. Sure. <laughs> <laughs> oh my! <laughs> it's, it's just like so unlikely. It's <laughs> it really is. like it's not gonna it go. Really no, they're is. with how they've been rewarded for their fucking horrific behavior. Yeah. No, it'll if get worse. Get worse. It'll if get anything, worse. the guardrails, if any existed, will be removed. They will be given yeah. free reign to do. Whatever you guys they want, they won't even doing, consult so... Todd or Bethesda yeah. when they want to nuke a faction. They'll just do it. 
Would Todd just say you can nuke anywhere if you want yeah. to nuke New Vegas? Be my guest. Well, what I if hate yeah, that place. Whatever. What what do you guys <laughs> place the odds on them eventually saying? Uh, some some guy, some interviewer says, "Hey, uh, everyone thought it was really weird when you uh, you know did this, which is completely in opposition to one of the main things that ever happened in anything Fallout." What do you have to say about that? And how long do you think before they say, "Oh, well, we like to think of the Fallout show as a sort of." Like, think of it as a side-by-side -side continuity. Like a, mm. like it's supplementary, well, it's mind. informative, but not the same. Of course, it was never supposed to be the same thing. Um, Ooh, I I, yeah, I think that's that's totally likely. They 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 are very fast and loose with the concept of lore and uh, thing and, and stuff like that. Canon. They'll totally chuck it in a heartbeat. They'll just you. I mean, you saw how casually and quick Emil just threw out the whole yeah. you know war crime thing. So that's just what they do. That's just that's, that's just, just what he tangent. does, and it's what they do. They'll just throw shit out like it's that definitely they don't a, give a um, fuck. They don't care about it the way you care about it. Okay, yeah. <laughs> they, they, it's not the same. They're not even thinking about it in the way that you're thinking about it. Like you point that out, and they go, "Oh!" Instead of, "Yeah, no, I knew. I just didn't give a shit." It's it's, it's even worse. It's so refreshing that you guys are actually respecting Fallout when so many people are just acting like the show is good because the games are stupid. No, they win. Not the good ones. I hope the World on Fire video does well. Uh, well, I don't know how many minds it would have changed, but that was obviously part of the hope of it. Um, and going forward, it's just... Uh, I mean, I don't want to get too doomery, but like, it does feel like something that a lot of people compared it to TFA, and it's like, how long ago was that? Oh, you know, nearly fucking ten years. Meaning is like, so, I guess, uh, video analysis never changes. <laughs> something. Nope. <laughs> nope. Um, it definitely feels like a cycle getting repeated, and, um, you know, there's a lot of validity to the notion that uh, when you get starved of anything good, I was about to say something okay can taste amazing, but, it's like, but it not, wasn't okay. Yeah. It was far from it was okay. It tasted very bad, and I hate it. Because like, I, I don't even want to concede. It's like, well, it was a bit better than the usual. It's like, is it? Was it? No, I think... It, no, no, no. I don't, I don't think so. <laughs> like, that's the thing. I don't think it's, like, even got really, like, many redeeming qualities. Well, like, um... You know, I think Drinker mentioned it's like, well, it's better than Disney stuff. And it's like, why is that the comparison, though? Why wouldn't it be? But I mean, is it like in terms of the actual writing across the whole season? Is it better than the typical Marvel movie? I would probably I say know. no. Yeah, I, 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 yeah. I don't think so. And it's like, well, look at the coat of paint, the, the, the Fallout coat of paint. And it's like, yeah, I mean, you know, let's see how that does by Generally, season three. Yeah, yeah. Because Marvel's coat of paint obviously doesn't work on anybody anymore. Seeing any hero do anything in particular is kind of just like, yep, seen that a million times. Yeah, right. Seen that. So, yeah, just... It, this is kind of what we were getting at earlier with uh, the whole Rapture thing, right? Like, I, I feel like a, a Bioshock show could be some of the worst written crap ever. But what do you guys think they need to nail in order to get away with it? Like having you get the music art and the aesthetics. Deco, you gotta get like Those the two, art yeah. deco aesthetic nailed. You need the music and you need you need Andrew Ryan to say all of the quotes that oh, if he says would you kindly, the like they probably got it at that point. Yeah, yeah, yeah probably having a big daddy in a suit going yeah, like there's something like that. That's, like, right. that's pretty much all you need. Yeah. And you know, you, you just yeah. This goes for Dead Space. If they made like a full fledged movie for it, it'd be like, what do they need to nail? Well, like, well um, you know, as we've now, I guess, is starting to become clearer. All they needed with Halo is John Halo still could have been the same idiot, but if he wore the helmet all the time and said occasionally, "I need a weapon," or uh, and the music to was give right, the covenant back their bomb and the music played, then it probably would have been seen as a lot better, even if all of the writing otherwise was the same. Yep. Which is people fucking don't annoying. Really care. So, well, and so many people just do not give a shit about the story or the characters or the writing. A lot of people what just I'm don't give a fuck. Getting at is that that veneer, you know, it just doesn't last, but it does work at first. It works oh. for long enough to guarantee another season, you know? It's, yeah, so I feel like we're in for a lot of these. Um, I think so. I think, I think everybody, the lesson is make sure at the very least that it looks like the thing that people like. Whether it is substantively the thing that they like, 
that's optional <laughs> you know that's well, what's funny dude is that like i don't think the fallout was the one that would make me you or rags get to our uh, let's call it a fever pitch but if they did this what they did to halo if they did it to i was about to say if they did it to halo <laughs> uh, <laughs> you well we've seen the result of what they've done if they do it to halo we get we, we i feel like we were covering it when basically the whole internet had fucking fell asleep on that show you know it was just like whatever yeah. ain't watching it anymore so Maybe that one's a special case, but obviously, yeah, if they go for Bioshock, the three of us are going to be very fucking pissed off if they do as well as they did with it's Fallout. Terrible, yeah. Uh, same with Dead Space. You know, like, if they adapted fucking Resident Evil 4 into a film and did the same thing, it would be the same thing. It's just, there's some IPs... The, and this, by the way, has a strange effect of being beneficial and detrimental at the same time. If they do it to an IP we don't particularly care about all that much, and I'm not saying Fallout definitely fits that bill, but let's just say it's close enough... We have the benefit of not being tricked by an aesthetic that we're not as, um, I guess, willing to be tricked by, but the detriment is that we're not as familiar in how they've destroyed everything. Mm. I suppose it's funny, too, because being really familiar with it can lead to you being tricked much easier, but also can lead to you not being tricked as easy. Yeah, yeah, that's true. Sort of just... Well, it'll just be what kind of... What kind of fan are you? The uh, the best meme to come out of Civil War, the movie. And that's also been completely forgotten, though it did well, right? From what I heard, or did it? It's funny when you were saying that. I was like, "What? What? Where was that line in Civil War? Captain America: Civil War?" <laughs> <laughs> I was like, "Oh yeah, that's right. That other Civil War movie." Yeah. Um, Apparently, it made a good amount of money, but it was the most heard, expensive yeah. A twenty four movie. So you know, Amazon consciously removed China from the law to maintain its relationship with IRL China. Prove me wrong. Also, high rags. He would say hi. Just a little muted right now. Um, yeah, I mean, everyone has concluded that because why else? Why else would that have happened? Mm -hmm. So it seems like the most obvious explanation. Maybe they'll explain it in season two. Where they'll go, no, 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 no. It was this reason we didn't want to reveal it yet. You're like, oh, I got or it. alternatively, there will be no explanation, <laughs> which is more likely. Always assume it'll be that. They own the IP, so they can do whatever. So if tomorrow I bought Halo and made my OC shit, cuck, kick, chef, chief's balls, the chef, but whatever, uh, turn his head into red jam. That's okay. Uh. I think the argument would be legally, yes, that is okay, but, like, nobody should be arguing that that would be a good decision or anything, you know? Mm. I guess when you say legally it's okay, it's, like, it's almost, like, redundant. It's like, whatever, who cares? A lot of people don't even... Like, like, we've talked about it several times, whether or not you consider... Do you can Like, does any Fallout fan who loves the first few games consider the show actually canon, or do they consider it, like, this silly thing they made? It's yeah, probably that's... the latter. I, I struggle to believe, because it's the same with the Star Wars sequels, I struggle to believe the hardcore, like, OT people actually think all of that happened. Like, yeah, like, no. do you really think about that when you think about Star Wars and those are the events that occurred? Like, do you really? Especially when because everyone seems to agree don't. Rise of Skywalker was awful. Like, like just nobody likes it. You know, plenty of people still like uh, TLJ and plenty of people... Well, I was about to say, when was the last time you heard someone praise TFA? Oh, in a long time. Because there's like even TLJ praise is wearing really well, good. It always yeah. was a weird like TLJ is a, arguably one of like the poster child for fucking culture war. That's why it, like liking it is like a statement. So people still claim to do that. I don't know how many people actually like TLJ. You know what I mean? Like how many people yeah, actually yeah, rewatch it? Weird, right? like liking TLJ is tied up in like your view on politics. It's yeah. so weird. Like, that is actually tied up on whether or not you say you like it or dislike it, there will be assumptions made about your political leanings on completely irrelevant, not, or irrelevant to Star Wars, like, subjects. And so, yeah. It's a shit film. And, and yeah. there's, like, <laughs> there's, like, viral options, especially with how you can make money on Twitter to just post, you know, is there a better movie than TLJ? Oh my god, best Star Wars movie, you know, all that sort of stuff. So... Yeah, but like I just cringe. don't see anything for a uh, TFA. I I mean that's not surprising in a sense because what is there in that film that's genuinely going to excite you? Yeah, you know? Maz, Maz Kanata. 
it's kind of an interesting thing yeah, about well, great, the though. conversations about movies and TV shows is that, in a sense, it's defined by what people think who are the most interested in it, either positive or negative. Because the people who are like generally apathetic on it will eventually kind of move on from the conversation, while people who are more interested in it will keep that conversation going and, in a certain sense, kind of define the the accepted consensus on it. Or sometimes it clashes crazily where people are like, oh, you know, it's like this this film is actually really great. And then it, that like gets around and people are like, wait, what? <laughs> like, do people actually think that this movie was great? I thought we all agreed it sucked. Dude, that the, sort of thing. The flip for um that fifth episode of Ahsoka. Like. Yeah. Yeah. Just. Interesting, isn't it? Why can't it just yeah, happen it... faster for fuck's sake? <laughs> I guess that's the thing is um you you figure that these sorts of uh tricks in the sense when they keep getting employed will eventually stop working as well, but no, I guess not. It still takes a bit of time. The, I've the, even the seen people saying that um Dead Reckoning is is just it is bad. And I was just like, Man, I felt like we were the only yeah. people saying that shit when it came out. Yeah, I know. That felt like a lonely little island that we were on. I think Lil Platoon said it was bad too, but I can't remember how long it took for him to see it. So I don't know if it's the quite as similar, but like we, yeah, like like I think it was even when we were breaking it down, it just got worse and worse and worse, didn't it? I think so. Yeah. Yeah. Huge shame, but uh, not to keep randomly shitting on it, but I mean, it kind of deserves it a little bit. Let's it deserves be it. Yeah. Don't let it get away with it. No. The communists wanted to wipe everything off the map and force everyone into squalor. What did they mean by this? Well, you can't really do that meme because they had the capitalists wanting to kill everyone, so. Yeah. They're just retarded. They destroyed the world. <laughs> it's, just, it's just, that's it. Good things happen in the world all the time. People who think bad things happening is more real are all miserable pricks who want you to be miserable too. Um, uh, there's some cool. truth to that. People who spread misery and doomsaying. A lot of the times, they want you to feel a certain way. They have an ulterior motive. It's not like, things are bad, so you need to do your best to make things better and help other people. That... No, no, a lot of people are like, no, things are really, really bad. You need to do this, you need to do that. Take what's you need yours. To side with this, yeah, side with this political thing, or watch this person, or da-da-da. These people are to blame, fuck them. Be like, oh, wow, yeah. yeah. I don't like them now. Uh, yeah. I honestly think Jim wouldn't be like, uh, wouldn't like this show if it wasn't for the scene making the capitalists cartoonishly evil and that commies are sane people. They, yeah, you'd think, but like it's so badly done. How is it useful or meaningful to you if you know? In just the real about, like, world, you want to actually be dealing with you know what you perceive to be a problem with the world. It would be like if the South Park episode had Kathleen Kennedy was a clown and they just said over and over again, I'm terrible and I make bad things. <laughs> the problem is I'm imagining that being funny. <laughs> you know they like do more than that, though. You things. fucking just know. Jumping back and forth, you know, like kind of like a crab <laughs> just bouncing back and forth. You know for a fucking fact they would do more with it than that. That's the thing. Yeah, of course. Because if it were just that. Thinking about their jokes and plan them out. Yeah, and, and that's the thing. Like, it, it, uh, what I'm trying to get at is like I'd feel pandered to, and I'm not watching something well crafted. I'm just watching someone who apparently agrees with me, you know, which is fine. But like, not even I would want to make so it was just like, oh, Catholic get it, you stupid. You know? It's like, okay, like people tell me I'm right all the time. I don't, I don't need you to as a show to just tell me. Oh, yeah, yeah, well, right first and foremost, right, yeah. you know. South Park is a really funny animated show that makes me think about stuff. It's like I always want it to be that. I would never want it to be a show where I watch it to feel comfortable and be like safe no. in my opinions. It's like, no, that's shit. I want South Park to be like, huh, hmm, you know, to give me those sorts of thoughts. Yeah, if anything, I wanted it to be more edgy with the uh, that episode. Yeah. Um, but the thing is, you just got to respect, like, their POV is going to be entirely different to ours. And yet there's some things that have this crossover that makes it so interesting. Uh, Jim is wrong. Don't nuke Shady Sands. Be like the based Spaniards. Take their land, their resources, and mate with their women. Viva la corona. <laughs> All right. True, uh, yeah. Also high racks. Hello. I, can, I can't hear the word table anymore without thinking of chables. Thanks, Rich Evans. Yes, that's a good Holding chable. Holding chable. Dude, nothing will beat fart bag. 
Fart bag. <laughs> Hashtag fart bag. That... <laughs> I lost bag. my shit listening to that. It was so fucking funny. You, uh, for reference for you, trying to remember uh, the name for... Um, uh, fucking... Whoopee Cushion. Whoopee Cushion, that's it, yeah. I love how that blanked out specifically because it was a word that I had. It was like a fart bag. Yeah, well, so he's trying <laughs> to remember he, he calls it. He calls it a fart bag. <laughs> <laughs> it's just perfect. I <laughs> make fun of him for having for being poor and having to buy a discount value <laughs> fart bag instead of the on brand whoopee cushion. Yeah, he couldn't afford the whoopee <laughs> cushion. He had to get a fart, fart bag. bag. <laughs> such a perfect name for such a shitty <laughs> knockoff. Uh, wait, rapid fire bad takes, run on sentences, and a propensity for mass murder. Are we sure Jim isn't movie Bob? I know, right? Gasp. I'm sure they would hate each other. Probably. That's actually, I, I have no idea what their opinions on each other are. I don't think I've ever seen Movie Bob or uh, like the Jimquisition have any videos or tweets about each other. Yeah, I actually have Are no they idea. the same person? Do we know? Can we get science have on this? Have you ever seen them in the same room? I don't think so. Hmm. This has uh, become a conspiracy. do 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 Either of you guys ever watch X Files? Uh, a little um, bit, not much. Not really, no. That's always one I felt I missed out on. Um, maybe I'll fill that in someday. That'd be neat. No, I just watched the Simpsons episode with it. Oh, I've seen that like a thousand times. <laughs> Which counts, <laughs> the I guess. Ending with Mo. Yeah. All right, they're on to us. Get him back to Sea World. <laughs> <laughs> oh God, who <laughs> knew my hills were this heavy? <laughs> oh now sorry now okay one more um i bring you love <laughs> he's bringing love let's break it what they say break his legs <laughs> i think it's, it. it's lenny first right it's bringing love don't yeah. let it get away that causes break its legs <laughs> and then there was a part where it was like oh kill it kill it no it's it's mr birds oh it's mr birds kill it, kill it. <laughs> <laughs> that's that's like the inverse of the uh that was zombie Flanders. It's like he was a zombie. Oh yeah, yeah, he was a zombie. <laughs> <laughs> uh Mola, thanks for including base norm calling out the writers of Fallout. Also you should have Almighty Lolly on. He makes great critique videos. Uh hmm. I can't resist having Norm McDonald references if they fit. That's just uh everyone should Norm have is that. a treasure for humanity. Yes. Norm would not have nuked the world. Probably not. You would vote no on that one. Um, but yeah. Fair suggestion. Search yourself. You know it to be true. Fallout is awful. Vent. Mola, you're right. It's pretty looking sh It's pretty looking schlock. Movie Jim only made it worse. I mean, the arguments in favor of the Shady Sand stuff, th th that video, I just never heard those. I think I'm closer to having more respect for someone to just say, you know, I like the decision, whatever. As opposed to it's law accurate. It's like, wow, you're really uh you're going as far as you can with this one, huh? Vault Tech isn't capitalist. State control of the economy is socialism. Vault Tech's plan is to become the state. I mean, they're talking about the ultimate monopoly, right? To absorb the market in every way, shape, or form. But the thing is that would have made more sense for them to try and do than nuke the whole fucking planet. Or even just nuke yeah, America specifically, which is just weird. It's just, it's just like, oh yeah, by destroying the world, then we will control the the non-existent economy. Like I said, that oh, I wish they were making good Austin Powers films semi regularly because I just want a really retarded character to say that to Doctor Evil of him just feel like right, <laughs> like even he can't yeah. handle this kind of logic. It's just perfect. It's sitting right there. It wants to be parodied. Even though someone will probably say, like, this is a parody. And be like, oh. Uh, okay. If you say so. Capitalists want to blow up the world. What? You'll have to ex explain this parody to me. <laughs> Please do tell. Jim is outlandishly wrong here. The world of Tam Tamariel. Tamariel? That's the Skyrim one, right? Tamriel, isn't it? Tamriel. Tamriel. Uh, I didn't know if the M was a mistake in writing, or if that's just how it's spelled. It was T-M-A. Is it supposed to be T-A-M? T-A-M. I yeah. think so, yeah. Okay. You know, everyone, yeah. we appreciate your super chats immensely, but <laughs> you can double-check them very briefly for spelling and grammar before you hit enter. Pretty sure when you type them out, it'll 
tell it'll give you the little red lines it'll let you know where yeah. things have gone wrong you just you just don't have any excuse it makes <laughs> it easier for us to know what the fuck you're saying if you do a little bit better with your communication uh, the world of Tamriel has seen Dwemer and Dwarven races disappear from greater civilizations into chaos and apocalypse, so he's wrong on another count. I am just not familiar at all with uh, Tamriel lore. I can't say one way or the other. I'm Eubler and Fringo Frango Frongo. <gasps> oh, hey. Hello. Frango. Frango. Rags, your mum's a Christian, right? What will you think when she and others get raptured in our lifetime? Also, hi, Rags. Hi. Uh, I just hope they have a good time, you know? Hmm. If everyone did get raptured, like we had just definitive evidence, I feel like the three of us would be fucking laughing so hard. Like, no way. Yeah, that just sounds, that just sounds like funny to me. It'd just be like, oh, okay. <laughs> All right, I guess I'll just uh, carry on. Yeah, that's doing that. stuff. <laughs> is that. Is the world still functional? Like, I hope so. Uh, damn, now I'm just thinking again from The Simpsons. Do you remember the Rapture movie? I think so. What's uh... I, I, it, was, I can't, it was like Left Below or something, and then it started raining, and there was a guy to play. Why did I choose to be gay? <laughs> <laughs> uh, change can only Bad be decision in hindsight. Yeah. Change can only be terrible change that's good. That's when it's boring and stagnation. How dare we want progress in the wasteland? Stop running the wastes. I just think it's a whole lot more interesting, like narratively and storytelling wise, isn't it far more interesting? You have a lot more options if there's like some basic level of civilization that's kind of like Imagine around. If, um... You can have factions interacting and infrastructure and things that are kind of established and worth protecting. Imagine in their own, like in season two or three or something, they make their own established, well-functioning civilization that Lucy and the ghoul eventually come across. Like it's brand new for the uh, IP. Yeah, we destroyed the NCR so we could have our own shitty thing. It would slot right in with the rest of the... It's, I, I completely IP expect crap. it. I believe in an interview they would be like, well, yeah, we wanted to show that some parts of the Wasteland have really managed to move along, you know? And they would just be like, I just... Oh, my God. We just didn't want the stinky NCR because that's not ours. No, it's, it's shitty and boring and no one likes it. We want to insert our parasite into the IP. And it would be terrible and no one would like it. And then... People would stop being like, they're going to do the thing. I know it's going to happen. They're going to be like, man, that season three was so bad. I wish it was good as season one. They're going to be sitting there with a, just, just, just head on desk. Sad, yeah. How did we get here? Regarding the spite point, Avalon did propose the idea of Obsidian making more Fallout games to Bethesda, and they declined. Fallout New Vegas was very popular and successful. So why do you reckon they did that? That's the thing. It's all very speculative. Everyone has to assume based on the actions of everybody. You can't get inside their heads. We don't have... Even if you had official quotes going one way or the other, you can't know for sure. Look, yeah, we don't know. It just seems that if they were spiteful, this would be exactly what we'd see. But we mm -hmm. don't know. It just looks exactly like that. But we don't know. And then you need that clip of the... Of the dude that says, why you have to be mad? It's just game. It's, it's only game. <laughs> True. The greatest philosopher of our time. The biggest irony of everything is that the longer we go without a good Fallout, the more defiled New Vegas will become. Essentially standing as the last time Fallout was about the story actually moving forward with interesting characters and factions. Yes, and they're, they're coming for New Vegas next. That's what the end of that is. It's oh, a yeah. threat. But you guys better like this show because we're coming for you. We will literally just shit on everything you like. Wouldn't and be surprised you if clap like seals while we do it because you're retarded. I wouldn't be surprised if it began with Hank like peeing all over it. We're just like, yeah, he's doing yeah. that because fuck Who's the you. cuck now? Who's the cuck now? <laughs> I heard you calling me a cuck in the reviews. It's not true. <laughs> it's not true. <laughs> Uh, in Andor Declassified, Tony Gilroy said, I'm grateful fans feel I treated this universe with respect. He always stressed that everything should be real. Yeah, because he's an angel in a <laughs> land of demons. <laughs> I just... We, we, things are just so backward. Like, that episode Tony where we... Tony lost. Tony got the, lost. Yeah, I mean... Oh, Andor Season 2, please also be very, 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 very good. We've got some potential bangers on the way, you know? Letting them cook. They gotta, they gotta be set at exactly the right temperature for the right time. Or, you know, everything goes right, but... Uh, 
the idea that he was criticized for using Wikipedia to make sure he got his references right, you know? Isn't that crazy? It is wild, isn't it? Like, what the fuck do you people want? I you feel lightsabers like... and Darth Vader breathing is what they want, but... I feel like our, uh, you know, the, the, the nature of this podcast has proven we, we know our Star Wars, at least somewhat, for the main movies, and I yeah, know for a fucking know. fact I'll be uh, checking everything that I'm doing. Of course. Probably on Wikipedia. You make sure. Feels millions like a resource that they would. Millions and millions of dollars are at stake. Also, your job and the cultural importance of this entire franchise. So, yeah, I'm going to be double checking. I double check like... super chats if I'm not sure I understand them correctly or not sure if I, you know, heard them right. Of course, I'm going to be checking a show that I'm writing. This many people, you know, waiting for you to deliver to them a story they want to find interesting. I was going to say, it must be so fucking demoralizing to be like, all right, guys, we did it. We worked really hard. Here it is. And then you see all your, you know, co-workers being like, yes, I just completed Kenobi. Oh, I just completed Book of Boba Fett. And you're just like, wow, that's... Both of those so bad, by the way, they were not used in the Acolytes marketing. Um, hmm, interesting. It's just fucking funny. It, what it said from the creators, or the people who created uh, Adore and Mandalorian. That's so fucking telling, isn't it? They know what to market. Well, I mean, even Mandalorian's gonna be losing. If they made another season, like, three, uh, I feel like Mandalorian's just fucked. Probably. Who, who will give even a fuck? Even though it was bad from the first episode. Unfortunately. Hmm. Bad f uh, fate for that one, too. Uh, just got here. Did Fringy say his iconic time to bring the Fring line? Oh, no, but that's not my iconic that. line. It he hasn't said that in a while. You always say, huh? he, I thought he, he, you always say bring the Fring. I don't. Here to bring so the Fring. I'm not sure what that's about. He bursts in through the wall and then he says, I'm here to bring the Fring. And then he does the thing no, with his arms. No, it doesn't sound right. We began several episodes with it. Fring is. Fring, Fring bringer is. He's modest. Mm hmm. Fringy bringy, we call him. <laughs> Shave your face with some mace in the dark. I wanna. Oh, I wanna. Shave your pleasant. face with mace? Hmm. I guess is that a using brand of like shaving like cream a, somewhere? A cream, yeah. Uh, can you guys please do a classic Pixar movies arc? It'd be a hit. Also, have any of you seen The Northman yet? I'm sure you'd like it. Also, High Rags. I've not seen it. It's on my list. Also, hello. But I, I would it, like yeah. to see it, but I haven't. Yeah. We are very interested in the idea of doing a classic Pixar arc. Well, uh. Yep. Someday. Who knows? Hi, Fringy. Tell us why you're a bird. Also, hi, Mola. Hello. Oh, it's well, his parents I can't were birds, tell you right? why. I'm not. I'm not a bird, so I can't tell you. Hmm. So There's funny. nothing to tell. Are you guys gonna watch? He's an Appleton. He's changing his species to be an Appleton. <laughs> yeah, that's fair. I support his decision entirely. Uh, are you guys going to watch the new Lord of the Rings anime film that comes out later this year? The what? The War for the Rohirrim, I think. I might be curious. Um, I think I'll go off of whether Gary and some others recommend it. If they do, I'll be like, all right, I'll check her out. Yeah, I'll check it out if it's uh, if it's good. Mahler and I would take a look, and Fringy yeah. can join us. Fringy can, he can bring the Fring from episode to mm. episode. Yeah, we're not going to sync play until there. he says it. <laughs> uh... Extinct animal of the day, Estaminocious, the face only a mother and or paleontologist could love. All right, let's give him a little look. See, yeah, it's uh, interesting that he he looks like he's a happy guy. What a handsome oh, boy! Looks so bad. Yeah, he's just living his he best like life. A, he looks like he's got a Pokemon head and then just a normal animal body. Yeah, it does kind of look like a Pokemon head. Yeah, he's got a Pokemon head. Where they're like, we don't want it to look too much like the thing it's based on, so let's just add some random shit. <laughs> like, All right. <laughs> random shit, go! And so, random shit was added. Um, all right, and on that note, thank you, everybody. That's the final massage. We appreciate it. 
And I yeah, suppose... everybody, thank you very much. We appreciate it a lot. We shall see you in the future, whenever that may be. But for now, bye-bye. See you later, bye, everybody. everybody. Bye -bye. See you later.